think they've got to protect their quarterback, Phil Petty. They've got to do it and do it well. Keep Mississippi State out of there and off Petty's back. They've got to continue to get the ball to Watson. And on defense, the Gamecocks have got to pressure the Mississippi State running backs. They really do make the Bulldogs one-dimensional in this ball game. make them throw the football. The Bulldogs and the Gamecocks, it should be quite a battle. We'll be back with a play-by-play -play right after this. CSS is your source for college football in the Southeast. Friday is Alabama night. Catch the best action Alabama schools have to offer. At 6.30, the Watson Brown Show brings you a half hour of in-depth Blazers football. Watch all season long as CSS brings you the best Alabama football games. Find it every Friday starting at 5 Eastern. Hi, I'm Watson Brown from UAB. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Hey, even we can't cover everything, so it's a good thing we have ESPN+. Plus. Coach, it's a good thing Randy Walker and his Wildcats have this guy. Damian Anderson can run with the best of them. The Wildcats head for East Lansing where they'll face a tough Michigan State club. You better hold on tight because T.J. Duck is one of the best running backs in the country, is going to take you for a run. Take it from the coach. Don't miss Big Ten college football action from ESPN+. Plus. And this is the scene of a Southeastern Conference battle. It's the second SEC ball game of the year for the homestanding South Carolina Gamecocks. Mississippi State's opener, as you see, the Bulldogs lead this series six wins to two. They've won five in a row. And last year, they shut out South Carolina 17 to nothing at Scott Field on the campus of Mississippi State. Two years ago, when they played here, it was a 38 to nothing Bulldog victory. And I think that's what's rankling some of these South Carolina fans, Jim. They haven't scored in 10 quarters against Mississippi State, and they plan to correct that situation today. Mississippi State, as you see, third straight road game for the Bulldogs, second time in history for that to happen. And back in 1992, they opened at 2-1 and one on the year. And, of course, this year they're hoping to go 3-0 and oh on the 2000 campaign. And while the Bulldogs have been on the road, South Carolina's been right here at williams Bryce. Some real home cooking, and they've won three consecutive ball games. They opened with a win over New Mexico State, a shutout. Then they pull the major upset at the University of Georgia, and then last week they completely buried Eastern Michigan. So a very good start for Lou Holtz, his ball club off to a 3-0 start. They're just outside the top 25. They think a win this week, and they crack the top 25 in the country. Especially after last year's disappointing season, Jim, the Gamecock fans and coaching staff very, very positive about this game. And we had ra rain all yesterday and throughout the night, but it, uh, we have the clouds breaking a bit. It's 71 degrees, humidity 65%. As you can see, we're going to have a bit of wind, and the sun's going to be peeking in and out uh, from those clouds this afternoon. That could uh, pose a bit of a problem sometimes for the guy who's trying to return the punt of the kickoff. But the field is in excellent shape. It was covered by actually two tarps, as you came out earlier and indicated, Jim, so it's great. Mississippi State's Jackie Sherrill has had an excellent career here at Mississippi State. His 10th season, he's won 61 ball games. His ball club has been the winningest team in the SEC West over the past three years. In fact, only Tennessee and Florida have a better record over the last three years than Mississippi State. As you can see, it is his 23rd year of college coaching, but he's going to be uh, uh, coaching against a veteran who's even uh, had a longer coaching career and even maybe a, a more storied coaching career, and that's Lou Holtz on the other side of the field with South Carolina. Well, Coach Holtz is in there somewhere. You can see his second season at South Carolina. Those three wins, by the way, that 3-11 and 11 represents all year 2000 wins, all 11 losses coming last year, of course, in his first season at South Carolina. And overall, as you can see, starting his 29th season, he has won 219 ball games. There's the referee, and that's Harold Mitchell who will be uh, handling things this afternoon. His crew is Ronnie Jones, who's the umpire. The linesman is Dan Dombinsky. The uh, line judge is Paul Petrisco. The field judge is Bobby Bernard. The side judge, Bill Bowden. The back judge is Toby uh, Cyberman, and the alternate is Eddie Powers here this afternoon. A Southeastern Conference uh, officiating crew, South Carolina. We'll kick off the football. Mississippi State will receive the football. We're just about set to get it underway. Dennis Hudson, it should be a good one here this afternoon. Battle of the Unbeatens, first conference game of the year for Mississippi State. Of course, South Carolina, as you indicated, Jim, two weeks ago, defeating Georgia. Looking forward to their second conference win, at least hopefully, against the Dogs this afternoon. That'll be Jason Course who will kick the football away for South Carolina, opening it. And Pig Prather and Dante Walker are the deep receivers for Mississippi State. We're underway. 
Now that is Prather at the two. Now he heads to the sidelines and gets upended right along the 20 yard line and South Carolina covered that one well. And we'll take a look at the offense for Mississippi State. There's that big offensive line, averages well over 300 per man. And the big left tackle, Port Chop Womack, leads that crew. Mississippi State will start Wayne Madkin, the junior at quarterback. He went over 100 yards, both throwing and running the football last week. DeCenzo Miller was the star with two touchdowns, one receiving and one running. The fullback is the, the veteran Kenny Williamson, and the two wide receivers are Grindel and Huntington. Donald Lee is a very good sophomore tight end. First play of the ball game. Bulldogs will work out of a two-back set. And going to uh, fake the end around, throw up the sideline, complete the pass out across the 40-yard line. Excellent pass out of the backfield to Justin Griffith, who made the catch, and he was taken off his feet out across the 40 at almost the 45-yard line. Let's take a look at it. Justin Griffith, the fake, the reverse in the backfield. There you see the fake, and then he is wide open. Justin Griffith on the far sideline and grabs the pass. Wayne Mackin hitting perfectly. This may set the tone, Jim, for Mississippi State to throw the football this afternoon. That may be what the Bulldogs have to do against this good South Carolina defense. And the I formation with Williamson, the up back, and Miller, the deep back. Off the play action again. Wide open Grindle, and he makes the catch at the 45. That could be another Mississippi State first down. Let's take a look at the defense for South Carolina. They will open on the front with the veteran Cecil Caldwell, a big senior defensive tackle anchoring the front four. At the linebackers, Andrew Offing, their leading tackler in the middle. Now that secondary is led by Rashad Faison, Faison, who was a freshman All-American last year. Bulldogs have earned two consecutive first downs. And we'll run the pitch play to Miller and look for the block out front. And he picks up a little bit of yard. He's got about four or five. South Carolina closed quickly on the play as the Gamecocks stopped it up. But uh, again, pretty good first down game, Dennis Hudson. First ground play for the Bulldogs. It really was the first ground play this afternoon after two consecutive first down passes. And Mississippi State, for all of those fans who were hoping Mississippi State would open it up after the Memphis game this year when Mississippi State's offense just didn't function particularly well. Boy, this game is in sharp contrast to that one, Jim. Mississippi State opening it up early, going two first downs in the first two plays of the ball game and now second down and five yards to go for the Bullies and they've got Griffith back in there at fullback and they're going to give it inside to Griffith straight ahead short game and the Bulldogs will be in their first third down situation of the afternoon got some penetration it looked like from Caldwell that big defensive tackle Cecil Caldwell he is a good story because he was a guy who was a partial qualifier as a freshman and he has played three seasons and because he was on track for graduation he has gotten his fourth year that's a very good story it very is it is a very good story and he has played particularly well this year for the Gamecocks and he was up on that play to stop Justin Griffith after only a short game first really possession play of the ball game Mississippi State third and about two yards to go Jim just shy of the 37. Split the backs and put Miller in motion. And run the quick pitch to Griffith, trying to get outside, and he will not get outside because of great pressure from South Carolina. They really stepped up there. Faison, the uh, freshman free safety, was up there and got great penetration. I think it was Edwards was the other guy who really cut that one off. And Willie Offord was there. I think number 20 is going to come into, into your picture as well. There's he's is number 20 coming in. Good play by South Carolina. Mississippi State on a possession play. Just couldn't pick it up after picking up two consecutive first downs through the air. The Bulldogs finally will have to punt. That means that Prentice Cole will be back to receive the snap from Michael Bender. He got a high snap, but he gets it away. And that ball is going to hit and get into the end zone. Bulldogs had Sean Birdsong down there who had outrun the football but was unable to keep it from going into the end zone. Mississippi State picked up back-to-back -back first downs and then South Carolina's defense made a stop. South Carolina's defense has done it all year long against Georgia. They were particularly effective and the Bulldogs after opening with two impressive first down passing plays just couldn't pick it up on third down and short yardage. So South Carolina, Jim, I think this is setting the tone. Mississippi State, I believe, intends to pass the football. They think they've got to do it against a good, tough Gamecock defense and I think they're right. Mississippi State opening it up this afternoon, hopefully. And we uh, 
have Mississippi State, a ball club who likes to pressure the passer, and you have South Carolina, a ball club who is led by a quarterback in Phil Putty. Now let's take a look at that offense. First up front, where they have uh, a couple of guys who've switched over from the defensive side and doing a good job. C.J. Fry was one of those who played defense last year. Melvin Page was coming off some, uh, some surgery. Petty leads it at quarterback. Petty has started off the year in excellent uh, condition. He has a 62% completion ratio. They've gotten him into the position where he can throw the quick, short pass. That's been a key for their offense early on. So Petty, the, the junior quarterback, doing a nice job early on. Derek Watson has had an, a great year to this point with over 400 yards rushing. And the receiving core is very good, led by uh, Kelly. Uh, Jamal Kelly, who has had two big ball games, by the way, in his career against Mississippi State. So, so that's the way we stand right now. You saw the stats on Petty, and you have to like the way this young man, who missed five ball games with injury last year, has come back. Let's take a look at the Mississippi State defense, and that defense uh, had a, a very solid ball game in both of their openers. Uh, Dorsett Davis uh, mans the front along with uh, some big teammates. They're big across the front. Connor Stevens and Mario Hagan. Hagan's had two big ball games at linebacker. And then that secondary, a very solid crew led by Pig Prather and Josh Morgan with the All-American candidate Fred Smoot at the corner. So uh, the both ball clubs are going to run five defensive backs, I think, in this ball game. And you're going to see those dog safeties for both teams, those two strong safeties both teams will play, get up there and really really be a part of not only the passing game but also the running game, Dennis. And normally when the defensive backs are making a lot of tackles, it's usually a bad indication, but for Mississippi State particularly and South Carolina for that matter, both their safeties and secondary will be involved in several tackles throughout the afternoon. They are very aggressive and they read the football well, get to it in a hurry. South Carolina likes to run four wides and they will do so on their opening possession. And give it a little draw play to Watson, who is going to be knocked down after a very short game by Big Dorsett Davis as he wrapped him up after maybe a yard. And that's what South Carolina likes to do. They like to spread you out and then run Watson on those little uh, traps and draws and delays. And you know why not? Why That's the guy to get the ball to because he is their ace, number one running back. Statistically, he is up there in the Southeastern Conference. In fact, in the country, he's one of the leading backs. So get the football to him early and often would be the game cock offensive plan, I would guess. Same formation, out of the gun. And you see Cuddy there rolling away from the pressure, throwing into the sideline, and the pass is complete to Jermail Kelly. I think he may be a step shy of the first down as Pig Prather knocks him out of bounds right after the catch. And let's look at that one again. Great throw and a great catch. Again, as Jim called it, the same formation with Watson in the backfield. A little roll to the right, and as you can see, the wide receiver is wide open, and Pig Prather comes up to shove him out of bounds. The ball was fumbled out of bounds, but third and very short for Carolina. Third down, short yardage situation. This is where South Carolina will get into the to the I formation set, and that's what they're going to do right now with obviously Watson the deep back. Bulldogs almost offside. Watson probably has a first down. He was right along the 30-yard line. Ellis Wims and company able to make the stop on the play. Well, Carolina had both their ends in tight for that formation, and power formation in the backfield and you knew Derek Watson was coming at you to the Mississippi State defense but they did execute pretty well and pick up the first down very short yardage but they didn't have that far to go so Carolina has earned the Gamecocks first first down of the afternoon and both teams slugging it out here early in the first quarter South Carolina who has gone with wide outs in either direction four wide outs and have used a, a backfield uh, had Watson ready to move from one side to the other. Cuddy looks like he's changing the play. Now he's ready to put it in motion. Bulldogs have three down linemen and back everybody else off. Little trap. Watson has Watson. it stripped. It's loose. It is picked up and headed towards the end zone. And headed is Dorsett Davis in for a touchdown. Was it Wims who knocked it loose? Wims knocked it loose. And a ball is picked up and taken in for the touchdown. And you know Jody Dunn's got to be happy across the way. A defensive touchdown is what all defensive coaches really dream about. And Mississippi State's had their share. Bulldogs went right for the football after the fumble by Watson, and he carried it in easily. Was it Davis or was it Hagan who took it in? We'll check it in a moment. We thought it was number big number 99, but it may have been number 98. We'll check it. But nonetheless, one of those big front people picked it up and took it in, and the Bulldogs have got three touchdowns off of 
defensive plays last week against BYU. Do it again. Westerfield misses the extra point. Wow, first one this year. Yep, and he hasn't missed money in his career. Let's take a look at the touchdown once again. You watch it closely, Jim. Your eyes are a little better than mine. I thought it was Dorsett Davis as well. That is Wims that knocked it loose. The ball is loose. It is picked up. And that is Mario Hagan who picks it up and heads to the end zone. Mario with the touchdown. And Mississippi State has taken a 6-0 lead in the ball game. We'll be back. Right now, we want to remind you, Mississippi State leads South Carolina early 6-0. You're listening and watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. I couldn't tell you, no, no help, I'm sorry. Get between your kids and drugs any way you can if you want to save the kid's life. Mississippi State, as we talked about early in the... Uh, Opening uh, needed to make big plays either on offense or defense. They just made a big play on the strip of the football by Ellis Wims and the return for the touchdown from Mario Hagan and now Mississippi State's John Michael Marlin, who is a freshman kicker out of Tupelo, Mississippi, will kick it away to Derek Watson. He's a do-everything guy. He's back on uh, punch sometimes, always on kickoffs. And this ball is going to be in the field of play, and Watson will have a chance for a return from the nine. Open field of the 20. Got a lane. Got a lane to the 40. Breaks in the open. Foot race on. And he's going to take it the distance. Watson will take it the distance for a touchdown. You can see it opening up. I don't know exactly what happened to break down as far as Mississippi State's concerned, but he did have a wide lane. Really just one man to beat, and he leaped over that tackler and raced it in for the touchdown. A foot race, and Watson's going to win that one every time. So the all-purpose do-everything back for South Carolina puts the Gamecocks right back into the ball game after a defensive blunder, or rather an offensive blunder for the Gamecocks, and now it's 6-6. Six to six. Well, I'm not sure. There's a flag down on the play. And let's see what the call is. Could be off sides against South Carolina. One guy looked like he jumped awfully early, Jim. That is exactly what happened. It is off sides against South Carolina. And that is going to nullify a 91-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. I watched him all the way, but I never saw the flag go down. So I thought perhaps I was seeing something in error. But this doesn't negate, however, the great individual effort by Derek Watson. It was a great run back, but unfortunately nullified by the penalty flag. So Mississippi State catches a break, virtue of the penalty against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Well, a five-yard penalty. Lou Holtz is talking to his charges right now, obviously going to send them back out there. South Carolina had a great answer to the Mississippi State defensive touchdown, and it's nullified by the penalty flag. And by the way, South Carolina has been a not-much-penalized team. Mississippi State, on the other hand, has been killed by the penalty flag in their first two ball games, but that really hurts the Gamecocks. It really does, and almost a role reversal, as you called it, because they haven't been penalized too much in Mississippi State for the last two years, and really more than that, has really been hit by the penalty flag and hurt by it, but this time the Bulldogs benefit. The five-yard penalty nullifies the 91-yard run by Watson, so South Carolina, and I'm sure Coach Holt said, hey, go back and do the same thing. And they put Corey Alexander back now because obviously Watson just went the distance uh, of the field, so they give him a breather and put Corey Alexander, a junior college transfer, out, and he is going to see that one sail well over his head out of the rear of the end zone. South Carolina will start from the 20-yard line. Mississippi State caught the break on the nullified kickoff return for the touchdown by Derek Watson. So now South Carolina will have to go to work and Coach Jackie Sherrill across the way making the notes. His ball club up six to nothing after picking up a defensive fumble and running it into the end zone for a touchdown. Coach Sherrill prides his ball club in having effectiveness in the kicking game. He will not be pleased with that breakdown which allowed Watson to take at the distance for the touchdown called back. Now South Carolina back at the 20 yard line, the same spot they started from earlier. Now they have a new running back Andrew Pennington there alongside Phil Pennington. Now the handoff is to Pennington. He has some running room and is going to be tripped up after a pickup of about three yards on the play. Pig Prather, who had 15 tackles in the ballgame last week against BYU, uh, was able to make that stop after a gain of nearly four yards. South Carolina had that play blocked pretty well. Mississippi State rushing only three defensive linemen. They had the corners coming up pretty quickly, but they ran the play pretty well. Picked up four yards, sets them up in second down, and 
about seven yards to go, just a little over six, really. Bulldog defense has held 11, as you saw that statistic. Been very, very impressive so far. Three receivers to the top of the screen. Now off the fake, Petty rolls, throws back in the middle, pass is caught, and the receiver is Kelly again. I'm going to be Russell down. Bulldogs able to get to him with Toby Galladay. And Mario Hagan was there to help out on the tackle as well, I think. But again, South Carolina executing well on offense. Petty with a good roll, good protection, a fake inside on the little trap play, and he goes back, rolls to his left, and he has a receiver wide open, throws off the back foot just a little bit, but Mississippi State allows the first down completion, and South Carolina has earned a first down, so the Gamecocks trying to battle back after the nullify of the great, great run by Watson. And they are going to have Putty faked everybody out, races out to bounds out across the 40-yard line, made a nice fake to Pennick and then kept the football, and the Bulldogs weren't very sure where the ball was that time. It was obvious that the fake had uh, drawn in the linebackers, and Petty made a nice gain out of it. They did a pretty good job downfield of covering the would-be receivers, and then Petty made a good judgment on his own of running the football, got positive yardage, and that's just a good play by the South Carolina quarterback. Picked up eight yards out of that play. Mississippi State running with three down linemen, three linebackers right now. They had been running four down linemen much of the time in their first two ball games. But he's going to hand it off, and it's going to be close to a first down. Punnick to right in the middle. Ellis Wims uh, wrapped his arms around him and helped to drop him there, and so did Mario Hagan get in on the tackle. And very, very close to a first down. They'll take a look at it. South Carolina doing a great job of blocking downfield or attempting to block downfield. They locked up one-on-one -on -one with the Mississippi State defensive backs, and South Carolina right now is just throwing vicious blocks at the Bulldog defenders. Back in there with a high formation now. Watson in. An extra tight end as a blocker. Watson gets the call and does not get the first down. Mississippi State got great penetration. And Blade and Galladay and company got great penetration, and Watson did not pick up the first down. That's a big defensive play for Mississippi State. He wasn't even close on that one. Mississippi State just did a great job of coming in there and submarining the play initially, and then just knocking Watson back, really lost probably a yard on the play. So South Carolina will be forced into punt formation, and Mississippi State's offense once again will get their second opportunity of the day. That's DeCenzo Miller, Mississippi State's uh, single return man. Tyler Dean will kick. There's a flag down, and let's see if Miller feels it. He does the six and has the ball fumbled. Goes back and picks it up. He's in the end zone and gets back out to the five-yard line, and that was almost disaster for Mississippi State as the ball went into the end zone, picked it up, brought it back out, and let's see what the flag is all about. All of this happening with a flag on the ground, so let's check it. Illegal procedure against South Carolina. More than likely, Mississippi State will make the Gamecocks punt it again. But you called it, Jim, almost a disaster despite the penalty flag. Asenzo Miller, a little adventuresome back there. The ball was on the ground for a little while, then he was in the end zone for a while, brought it back to the five, but all of this negated by the penalty flag, so South Carolina will do it all over again, trailing in the, all, in the ball game six to nothing. Tyler Dean has averaged 30, 36 and a half yards per kick as long as been 44 this year. He's forced to punt it once again. Didn't look like it there, though. That was a great, great punt. Kicked it very, very well. Now it'll back up to about the 36-yard line. Miller will have another opportunity, and he will be standing at a, about his own 22 or 23-yard line awaiting this one. Good crowd, packed house again here. Although I think the rain may have kept a few folks away from this ball game, but they sold all the tickets. Dean hits it well again. Miller comes up and makes the catch and gets knocked down in his tracks inside the 25-yard line. Great open field tackle as DeCenzo Miller, nowhere to go. Kevin House made the play on the special units. Really a good play by South Carolina's special units as they knocked DeCenzo Miller down right at the 25-yard line, just about where he took the football. So the Gamecock defense will come on as Mississippi State's offense comes on for the second time today, Jim. And we have a timeout on the field. Six to nothing is our score. Mississippi State leading in the first period. CSS, your sports source for the Southeast. 
A, a defensive play has been the difference so far in the ball game. That and a penalty flag. Mississippi State picked up a errant fumble and ran it in for a touchdown. Uh, Mario Hagan went in for the touchdown. And then South Carolina on the ensuing kickoff ran it back 91 yards for an apparent touchdown only to have it nullified by the penalty flag. That was Derek Watson who returned that ball. And the six didn't go on the board. Mississippi State has actually only their second offensive possession of the ball game. They'll start from their own 24 this time. We'll look for State to open it up once again. They opened up on the first two offensive plays of the game by throwing. Let's see if they continue to do that, Jim. Atkin, a very standard type formation, and that's Miller getting a couple of yards, and that's going to be all South Carolina. Has been tough to run against this year. They've done a great job of stopping the run, and that's one of the, I think, one of the things that is a key to this ball game for South Carolina. If they make Mississippi State have to throw the football, that's what they want to do. Well, against Georgia, they forced Georgia into passing situations almost virtually every down of the second half and intercepted Quincy Carter five times. So South Carolina, if they can make you throw the football, that's exactly what the Gamecocks want you to do. You're exactly right, Jim. Same formation, except that they uh, kick both receivers to the bottom of the screen to the left of the quarterback. Run a little draw play. Miller's got open field. And he's going to have a first down out across the 40-yard line. Big hole on the draw play for Miller. Well, South Carolina had four men that time charging on the line of scrimmage. And evidently someone came in from the outside, but a big hole. You'll see the Mississippi State offensive forward wall. Good lead block. And then DeCenso Miller finds the secondary and earns a first down. Boy, that's a, that's a great run and also great blocking, Jim. And a good block by the fullback, Williamson. It sort of kicked out and opened it up, and it was a face on in the secondary who was finally able to make the tackle. The ball's out of the 42-yard line. By far the best rushing attempt for Mississippi State thus far. Vicenzo Miller now with 23 yards in the game on three carries. Well, they had a little pressure, and uh, Madkin got rid of it in a hurry. He was trying to locate the tight end over the middle, but Harney was putting the pressure on. Kenny Harney, who is a linebacker, 6'2", 239 pounds. He's the leading returning tackler on the South Carolina ball club. He had 91 tackles last year. Then he had some injury problems and missed the spring, but he's come back and he's playing very well. One of the mainstays in the Carolina defense, as we had indicated to you throughout the first part of the ball game thus far, they have been tough all year long, particularly on the run, shaking up on the play. Bulldogs again, we're going to send the stack, actually, the two receivers, Brindle and Huntington. Let's go back to the I formation. A little bootleg action this time. Madkin wants to throw deep, and the pass is underthrown. Battle for and broken up at the 15-yard line. He had Grindle down there. He stopped and he threw it in the middle of the field, but underthrew the pass. Good coverage downfield for South Carolina for one thing, and then Madkin underthrew the pass. He was being chased by Dennis Quinn. It was Sheldon Brown who broke it up, and Jackie Sherrill looks on, and I don't think he particularly liked the way that play developed. Well, the ball floated up there a little bit, and I can't really tell which way the wind's blowing exactly, Jim, or whether it's a factor, but the ball hung up there just for a second, and Grindle had no chance to come down with it. He had two defenders all over him. So Mackin facing third down and long possession play for the Bulldogs. Parker and Jenkins are the new receivers. Parker to the top of the screen. He's a junior college transfer. Bulldogs in the gun. Madkin under pressure and knocked down back at the 30-yard line, and there is a uh, flag down. It was Nesmith who came through the free safety to get the sack. Now we'll see what the penalty marker is all about. From where it's thrown, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not a holding penalty. Exactly right. Yep. That'll back the Bulldogs up. Or actually, I guess South Carolina will take the play. Let's holding look for the hold. On the expense. It is declined. We'll take a look at it once again. Antoine Nesmith, I never saw him jump until the last moment. He just came from the outside, I guess, on the left. Nobody picked him up, and he dumped Wayne Matkin for the loss, and then the holding was somewhere in the middle of the line. So South Carolina obviously takes the play and forces Mississippi State into punt formation. Good play by the Gamecock defense. Ryan Brewer is the safety, standing back inside his 35-yard line. Cole gets a good snap, got pressure, and got it away. I'm not sure how he got it away. Brewer grabs it 
at the uh, 25 and is going to make his way back over the 30-yard line. Pretty good coverage by Mississippi State's uh, the snapper, Michael Bender, was the first to get there. But they were all over Cole, and he got rid of it. Somehow. They really were. I think he must have kicked that ball under someone's arm because it looked from here as if that kick was going to be blocked all the way. 43 yards on the kick and a short return by Brewer in South Carolina down 6-0 in this ball game. Will start from about their own 32-yard line. They've started from the 20 twice, and now they start from the 32. So this is their best field position for start so far this afternoon. Petty has watched the man. He's on the gun once again with uh, four wideouts. Rolls, throws, and almost had it intercepted, and that was Connor Stevens who reached up and almost picked it off. The ball was a little behind Stevens, who had dropped into the zone, and Petty evidently didn't see him coming across. Bulldog defense, as you see, has one interception in 14, has at least one interception, we should say, in 14 straight games, and almost had another one there. Connor Stevens dropping back into coverage, and Petty, as you said, Jim, I don't think he saw him, and Connor gets a left hand up just to bat the ball away. Incomplete in South Carolina once again second down and ten yards to go Stevens had a touchdown return of an interception last week against BYU pass in the middle and a turning catch And I think it was indeed a scooping catch by Jermail Kelly up along the 30 uh, around the 42 yard line very close to a first down That was a good catch because that ball was thrown behind really him it's going to be evidently just a bit short of the first down. It'll be third down and very short yardage for South Carolina. 6-0 Mississippi State leading in the ballgame. Well, Carolina hasn't done particularly well converting third down yardage, but this is very, very short. We'll see what the Gamecocks come up with here. Evidently, Petty changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Both ends in tight. Watson didn't need much, and I think he probably leaned in and got it, although the Bulldogs got Mario Hagan and Dorsett Davis and, and Josh Morgan all up around the football. It looked like Watson picked it up. South Carolina is sort of doing what they wanted to do. They controlled field position against Georgia, Jim. If you look through some of those game stats, they just control field position, and so far they haven't done it this afternoon, obviously, and Mississippi State has the lead, but that's what they're trying to establish, and they just cranked out a first down, so they got four new downs, and first down from the 42-yard line still in Gamecock territory. Look for the pass here. South Carolina is now two out of three on third down conversions. Petty has some time, still has time, wants to throw up the sideline, has a wide open receiver at the 30. And he breaks a tackle to the 10, into the end zone. That's Corey Alexander with the touchdown. And he made some good moves after the catch. South Carolina right back. No penalty flags. It's 6-6. 58 yards, and the, the reason that Petty was able to complete that pass was the fact that Mississippi State could not get to him. The offensive line for South Carolina did a great job of protection. He was able to pump and pull it down and pump it again, and then found Corey Alexander. And he wasn't only pumping, he was looking one way, looking the other, and then all of a sudden he came back down, had a man wide open, and a couple of great moves after the reception for the touchdown. Good play by South Carolina. Point after would give the Gamecocks the lead. Faye kicks it, and South Carolina has the lead in this football game. 4.07 remaining here in the first quarter. Let's look at the touchdown. Look at Petty. He's looking left, looking right, then looks back to the left, pumps once. Then he's got a receiver wide open. Watch these moves downfield. Josh Morgan missed him, and then another man missed him toward the end zone, and Mississippi State's trading for the first time today, 7-6. To Good play, South Carolina. Corey Alexander with the touchdown. Petty with the touchdown throw, his first of the year. South Carolina with a lead late in the first period. 7-6, the Gamecocks on top. You're watching CSS at your source for sports in the Southeast. Mississippi State will receive the kickoff from South Carolina, who just got the ball into the end zone. Jason Course does the kicking off for South Carolina. Uh, and the Bulldogs had an opportunity to return his first kick. This one is going to go to Prather, and he's in the end zone. He's going to run it out from three steps deep in the end zone. And has a little bit of a lane out over the 20-yard line and ended up closer to the 25. South Carolina covered the kick well. And Mississippi State trailing for the first time of the ball game will start from their own uh, territory. Here's what's happened thus far in the ball game. 
Mississippi State defensive touchdown is negated by a scoring drive of 68 yards in just four plays. A 58-yard touchdown pass to Corey Alexander from Phil Petty and the extra point by Bethay. It took a minute and 18 seconds for South Carolina to put that TD on the board. They worked quickly, did the Gamecocks on that particular drive. They did a nice job. Dante Walker on the backfield gets the handoff for Mississippi State and fights for about a yard. And South Carolina rejuvenated defensively by the touchdown. Close that playoff in a hurry. The Carolina defense, Jim, has been just as good as advertised. I think they have pretty well shut down the Mississippi State running attack, except for a couple of runs by DeCenso Miller. They have given up a couple of pass plays that were potential first downs for Mississippi State. But by and large, they've done an excellent job. And I've been really impressed with the special teams. They get down on punts and kickoffs in a hurry. They, they're pretty well schooled in all areas of the game, I think. Second down and nine for Mississippi State. Quick pass completed. And a nice little move by Larry Huntington, only his second catch of the year. Now he sprints out across the 30-yard line, but he's going to be shy of the first down. But that was a good play by Mississippi State. I don't know whether Matt can call the play or what, or whether it was sent in from the bench, but they're blitzing. South Carolina is sending just about everybody, so they swing it out very quickly and get positive yardage. That's a pretty good play by Mississippi State. I think that's what the dogs are going to have to do the rest of the day, hit quick hitters, perhaps runs or passes, to negate that South Carolina defense, which is charging furiously, sending their linebackers in there occasionally. Have a third down and four. Roll Mackin away from pressure, throw it complete into the sidelines to Clarence Parker. And he has run out of bounds immediately. Good pressure by Langston Moore, but a good job by the Bulldog quarterback to get rid of the football and uh, pick up a first down out at the 36-yard line. Clarence Parker, a junior college transfer receiver who is seeing more time. Madkin has completed four of six passes here in the early going for a 45 yards in the ball game. I think that's what State's going to have to do, Jim. I don't know whether or not you agree, but I think they're going to have to throw, particularly down the field, not just the out routes all day long, to, to negate the South Carolina rush. And thus far, Wayne Madkin's doing it in this drive. Griffith is in there at fullback for Mississippi State, and Matkins looked like he may have stepped on his either center or guard as he came out from under center and took a tumble and lost about four or five yards on the play. But again, South Carolina up front. That time they didn't blitz. They were just rushing four down linemen, and Wayne, I think, as you said, just tripped and fell down. Nothing you can do about that play. Just go back and try it again. You see the score. South Carolina 7, Mississippi State 6. South Carolina scoring on a long pass play. The Bulldogs getting yet another defensive touchdown this year. That's Justin Jenkins, the freshman to the bottom of the screen. Parker to the top of the screen. Man-to-man -to -man coverage in the secondary for South Carolina. Somebody almost jumped in the Bulldogs move, and let's see if uh, the tight end Lee moved, but it looked like South Carolina was in the neutral zone when he did, so they'll have to just sort of sort this one out. They'll huddle it up and talk about it and decide whether it is offside South Carolina, whether it is Mississippi State with offensive movement. We'll listen to the referee. Ball. Offside. Five yards penalty. I think he made contact, Jim. I think is why they call South Carolina for the infraction, because he might have made contact when he crossed. He still had time to get back, of course, because before the ball was snapped. But I think he may have made contact with the Mississippi State center. I'm not sure. Ball out of the 38-yard line. It'll be a second down and eight now. So the Bulldogs got back. The yardage lost, plus a couple more. Bulldogs haven't been penalized yet. South Carolina, three penalties for 15 yards. But boy, the one that hurt was on the kick return for the touchdown by Watson. Really good. Gave it inside. Griffith, really a good surge, fights his way out close to the 45-yard line. Langston Moore and Willie Offer to the guys who make the tackle on the play. But that was a good hard-nosed bull-type run by Justin Griffith, and they would like for him to be that multi-purpose back who not only can uh, catch the ball out of the backfield, something he's shown he can do very well, 37 receptions last year, but he also can pick up some yardage from that fullback spot running the football. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought he did an excellent job last year doing exactly what you indicated, being that running back to pick up the tough yardage inside, yet being that reliable quality receiver out of the backfield. I just think they need to get the football in Justin Griffith's hands more. Short yardage on third down, pitched to Walker, trying to get outside, turns it upfield and got the first down as he crossed the 50-yard line. I think he wanted more. I think he wanted to take it the distance that time, and he was just one block away from perhaps doing that. Dante Walker 
Heidi Townage, sophomore for Mississippi State, gets the pitch. It's a sweep all the way. No misdirection about this one. Good blocking at the point of attack, and then Dante Walker cuts it back toward the inside. South Carolina reacts in a hurry, but not before Mississippi State's earned another first down. Bulldogs got a drive underway. That is five first downs for Mississippi State. They're on the South Carolina 46, trailing 7-6. We have about a minute to go in the first period. Off the play action, Madkin looking deep, throwing deep. Parker out there fighting for it at the goal line. Pass overthrown and incomplete. Good coverage by the Gamecocks. It was good coverage by the Gamecocks on that receiver. Mississippi State had another man open, a shorter route, though it looked like. Madkin didn't see him, apparently. But that, that receiver was pretty well covered downfield, as you mentioned, Jim. He really was. That was uh, Kevin House, the guy who did the job. There's Jackie Sherrill on the sideline. Matt could four for seven for 45 yards. Mississippi State in a second down play from the South Carolina 46-yard line. Walker still the tailback. Well, we get movement again, and again, we get the tight end who moves for Mississippi State. We had movement in the defensive front for South Carolina, but I think that time, more than likely, Lee is going to be guilty. I think you're right. It's going to go against Mississippi State five yards. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. A five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. I think Lee saw the movement in South Carolina, and uh, that, that's exactly what happened to him on the previous play, but that time South Carolina was in the neutral zone, and maybe had made some contact. That time uh, they got back, and Lee came off sides. Illegal procedure. Bulldogs now face a second down at about uh, 15 yards to go. Back on their side of the 50-yard line. Inside, Walker with a little bit of running room, stumbles forward and picks up about back to the original line of scrimmage. And Watley, Shannon Watley, a 6'1", 230-pound junior linebacker is the man who makes the tackle. It'll be a third and 10 for Mississippi State. And this play upcoming could well be the final play of the first period. Walker, by the way, has carried the ball now three times for 16 yards for Mississippi State. Huntington and Grindle are the receivers to either side. And on the shotgun, Wayne Madkin. Madkin gets time to throw, now scrambles out of the pocket, flag is down, trying to get outside and throws the ball downfield, incomplete knock down, but I think that you probably, from the way that flag came down, have a hold on the play. Down to four seconds left in the quarter. Coach Jackie Sherrill across the way is talking to Wayne Mackin about something, perhaps. I don't know the play selection or whatever, but he's not a happy man. Flag was thrown behind the line of scrummage. Let's listen to Harold Mitchell. On the off. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Penalty declined. It is a fourth down. Mississippi State will be forced to punt, and that means that Prentice Cole, who in the opening ball game this year, Kicked it 10 times for a 45 and a half yard average. And then last week against BYU, five times for a 50 yard average. He has done it twice today for a 41 yard average, and he will be kicking to Ryan Brewer. He's a pretty good weapon out there. Is that what you're saying, Jim? I would say that so far this year, he's been a pretty good weapon, although he barely got it off the last time. They're not putting any rush on. He's trying to pooch kick it down inside the 10. Brewer's going to fair catch it at the 11. And South Carolina will start the second quarter from their own 11-yard line. That runs out the first period of this football game. And South Carolina, at the end of the corner, is leading it by a score of 7-6. to six. One period gone. The Gamecocks on top by a point. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Southeast. Petty in the shotgun. From the 11-yard line, South Carolina going to throw the quick little pass to Watson and give him running room, and he breaks outside, and Josh Morgan finally gets to him and with some help drags him down close to a first down, and that's what Watson can do, get him the football and allow him to get in a situation where he has one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back. And South Carolina did a great job of blocking that play, too, Jim. They kept Mississippi State at bay, didn't really knock any of the Bulldogs off their feet, just kept them occupied and 
Watson can really do that and do it well one on one and that was a great tackle by Josh Morgan. He had to come up from the secondary. Had he not been there, it might have been quite a bit of a substantial gain for Derrick Watson. But once again, Mississippi State's defense getting there, but just a bit too late this time. Five first downs for South Carolina. Again, they give it to Watson. Trying to run outside and a little bit of trouble. Uh, no, they faked it and now went the other way. And that lost a lot of us. And Smoot finally got to Petty. And Petty made a great, great fake on the play. Didn't he really it? did. I was faked off. I don't know. I don't know about you, Jim. I guess you were. But this is this is just great work in the backfield. Watch this. I was watching Derek Watson all the way. Nope, he doesn't have it. It's the other way. My camera guys did a great job in the truck. Great guys keeping keeping up with Phil Petty. And great Petty, leg play. Petty ran it all the way out near the 40-yard line. Ball right around the 40-yard line. That's a 19-yard pickup by Petty. He's back in the gun once again. South Carolina doing a great job of faking. They put Brewer in motion. That's Ryan Brewer, great utility back. And now they're going to throw the ball towards the flat, and that's Smoot up there to break it up. Fred Smoot was right there to break it up. South Carolina players and the homecoming crowd won a pass interference against Fred Smoot. It looked like a pretty good defensive play by the, by the Bulldog cornerback on that one. Number two, Fred Smoot, you see him there. Carlos Spikes was the intended receiver. Now, he's a backup quarterback, but he's also played some wide receiver. But that uh, can really make things dangerous because there's a guy who not only if you drop him off the line as they did, could catch the football, he could throw the throw football pass, back right. downfield. Yep. Exactly. Trip receivers to the bottom of the screen. Petty looking on a quick end, and the pass is dropped. Good he had Ages. He had Michael Ages, but Ages couldn't hang on to it. It was a little behind him. Maybe a half step late getting there. And South Carolina will be in a third down play from the 40-yard line. Well, neither team has particularly done well on converting third down plays. They move the ball up and down the field on occasion at least. The third down plays have been pretty hard to come by as far as Mississippi State and South Carolina concerned. Let's see what they do on this one. Mississippi State, of course, showing that usual three-man front, but they made blitz. They may play man to man in there. Oh, Mason, one of the dog safeties. Here we go, Jim. Yeah, walk the dog safety up, then bring him back. Petty back to throw, getting some time, throwing down the middle. Pass is broken up and almost intercepted. The pass was a little again behind Brewer. Smoot was the guy closest to it when it bounced off his hand. Morgan was there on the coverage. And South Carolina, after the nice bootleg fake run that was executed and picked up 19 yards out of the 40 after that three straight incompletion. And Coach Holtz a little upset on the near side. Wanted to see more action from his offense. They had done well picking up two consecutive first downs, but then the Mississippi State defense did a good job. And once again, forcing South Carolina into punt formation to send Joe Miller back deep for the Bullies. And Mississippi State has blocked Tyler Dean's kick. It's loose. They'll get it inside the 25-yard line. It may have been Julius Griffith who came through and got his hands on it. But Mississippi State went after Tyler Dean, and they blocked the punt. And that's their second big defensive play here in the ballgame. This one on the special unit. Mississippi State's defense. Keeping keeping the Bulldogs in the contest. Here it is. Back to punt. A couple of Bulldogs are there. I can't see who got it, Jim. Your eyes are a little bit better than mine, so you may have to take over here. But Mississippi State gets a big break. It was either Griffith or maybe George White, who were both right back there. Let's take a look at it again, see whether it was White or Griffith who got it. Great pressure. And the kick is blocked, and Mississippi State gets the ball in great field position. Griffith and White came through. Special plays, though, as you said, Jim, makes a big difference in the ball game thus far. Mississippi State with a great opportunity. Have a one-back look. And that's Griffith alone back. And we have a penalty marker, or we have the uh, delay of the game. Mississippi State waited too long to come out of the field of play, and we have a delay of the game. So the Bulldogs had gone to a one-back set. But they will lose five yards, penalized. Ball, ball. Delay of game. Five-yard penalty, first down. I'll put the ball back uh, on the 29-yard line. Sun breaking through. That's a welcome sight here in Columbia after the rains of yesterday. Look at the look at the penalties. Uh, Mississippi State, 2 for 10. South Carolina, 3 for 15. So that is where we stand the ball game to this point. Walker and Griffith, and that's for the second time in the ball game. Matt can slip down, but he did get the ball to Griffith. 
that was our weather was Walker that got the ball. That was interesting. I don't know what's happening there, Dennis. Let's just see if we can pick it up. I don't think this is a design play, Jim. He got. It looked like he got stepped on as he came back out from under center. May have been Watson that stepped on him. Good camera work, guys. We could see it, but it's hard to tell exactly what happened. But the second time in the ball game, it's happened. Ball's back on the 32. Second down play out of the shotgun. Matt can back. Good protection. Throws to the tight end. Wide open in the middle. And Donald Lee takes it inside the 20. And ends up down around the 17-yard line. Now that may have been Marco Hutchinson, one of the Packers on the play. Nesmith was the other. They're going to put it actually on the 18-yard line. The Bulldogs are still going to be four yards shy of a first down. Matkin has thrown to five different receivers already in the football game. Well, Donald Lee has been open on a couple of rounds, but somehow or another, Wayne Matkin just didn't get the hook to At that time, he did beautifully in Mississippi State now with possession play, third down, and four yards to go. Split the backfield. Matkin puts uh, Huntington in motion back towards the line of scrimmage. Goes back to pass. Plenty of time. Shoots the pass complete to Grendel, and Grendel trying to get a first down and may have it inside the 14-yard line. He had to get to the 14-yard line. South Carolina closed on it quickly. They drug Grendel underneath and got him the football. And Madkin did a nice job of waiting for things to develop and getting the football to Grendel. Actually, he had two receivers open. Grendel was open as Jim called it, but also Donald Lee, the tight end, once again was wide open at about the five-yard line. Wayne just didn't have a chance to spot him to get the ball further downfield. But Mississippi State in great shape now with a first down deep in South Carolina territory. Walker the deep back out of the eye formation. South Carolina coming, pitch it to Walker, and he turns it in. Got a good kick out block and got good yardage inside the 10. Dante Walker on that pitch play, and he seems to like that play when you run him laterally and let him punt it upfield. If he sees daylight, he does love that play, and I think you're going to see two great blocks. Donald Lee gave him a great block out front, as did Justin Griffith. And you see Dante Walker, four rushes for 22 yards. But, Jim, you're absolutely right. On those pitch plays, he loves to see the daylight and scoop to it. He runs that play well. Pick up about six. Balls on the eight-yard line. Bulldogs have hammered it inside the 10 now. They change the play on the line of scrimmage. And pitch it to Walker once again. Turns it in once again. And this time, very short yardage. Maybe a couple of yards out of the play. And offing and Nesmith. Fasson was also there. Fasson is uh, all over the field. Uh, the free safety, uh, making a lot of movement around uh, on the field of play. Ball just shy of a six, and it's about two and a half yards shy of a first down. Big play coming up. And Jackie Sherrill looking on. That Carolina defense is just relentless. You can see why they are nationally ranked in the country. They've done a nice job this afternoon defending Mississippi State for the most part. Three down guys. They'll uh, walk uh, a linebacker and a safety up. They're really playing an eight-man front, and now Madden wants a timeout. He looked at a lot of movement over there, tried to decide what he wanted to do, and he will go to the sidelines to talk with his coach with 10.40 left to go here in the first half of play. South Carolina leading at 7-6. to six. Mississippi State is threatening after blocking a South Carolina punt and getting the ball in great field position. And we're going to take a break. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. CSS, your sports for source for sports here in the Southeast. Bulldogs and a big, big ball game with South Carolina. SEC opener on a big, big play here. Early second period. Madkin wants to throw, and his pass is broken up. And that was Faison who did a great job. The free safety who got out there and did a great job. Justin Griffith, I think, was the intended receiver out of the backfield. And South Carolina had him pretty well wrapped up. This play wasn't particularly well designed from the start. They were looking all the way to the right, and you see a couple of Gamecocks right there in the great breakup. And Justin Griffith, the pass goes incomplete, and Mississippi State forced into a field goal situation. 23-yard effort. Ball will be placed down. DeCenzo Miller will hold it at the 13-yard line. It's an uh, angle kick from the hash mark. Scott Westerfield kicks it up, and he is good. He is three for three in the field goal department this year, and Mississippi State has regained the lead at 9-7 to seven with 10-31 remaining in the first half. So Westerfield with the field goal, and Mississippi State did not get into the end zone but did come away with points and lead in this ballgame. We're in the early 
second period, and all of the Bulldogs, I know, aren't happy with the fact that they were unable to get across the goal line. Still, you've got to come away with points when your defense sets you up like that. Well, once again, special teams played a, played a role in that, blocking the punt by South Carolina, setting the Bulldogs up in great field position, deep in Gamecock territory. And after picking up a first down, Mississippi State stymied, but they do get the field goal, as Jim indicated, and take the lead in the contest by the score of 9-7. to seven. So Coach Jackie Sherrill makes his notes across the way, and once again, Mississippi State has regained the lead here in the second period of play. Jackie Sherrill, by the way, is meeting Lou Holtz for the fifth time. They have met four previous times. One was last year when Mississippi State won 17 to nothing over South Carolina in Starkville. Twice when uh, he was at Texas A&M, they played Arkansas when Lou Holtz was at Arkansas, and they split those ball games. And then the other time uh, was uh, in the, uh, I think, the Cotton Bowl, uh, Notre Dame. And uh, Texas A&M, Texas A&M won that ball game. There's the scoring drive. It took seven plays. They only moved it 18 yards. It took three minutes and 31 seconds, and they capped it off with the Scott Westerfield 23-yard field goal. And so we stand at 9-7, Mississippi State leading here in the early second period of the ball game. That's going to be Corey Alexander, the touchdown maker, who is back in deep receiving position. And Mississippi State's John Michael Marlin, the freshman place kicker, will kick the football off as South Carolina has already run one back, but Watson, who was back there and ran it back, has not been back on the last two kickoffs. And I think you're exactly right, Jim. The turnover or the punt block, Mississippi State had to get some points. Obviously, the Bulldogs would have liked a touchdown, but in a situation like that, you've almost always got to come away with some points, and a field goal certainly is better than nothing at all. I think the Dogs did what they had to do, taking the field goal and regaining the lead 9-7. to seven. But again, hats off to both these defenses. It, defenses, it has been a defensive struggle thus far in the contest. Total yardage so far in the ballgame. South Carolina 125 total yards. Mississippi State 102 total yards. And we're not quite five minutes deep now in the second period of the ballgame. Neither team has been able to consistently move the ball game again, uh, move the ball against really the other, other team's really defense. Not. Marlins kickoff is in the end zone and it's deep enough that this one will not be run out. And South Carolina for the third time in the ballgame will start from their 20-yard line. Corey Alexander was not going to run that one back. I think he was initially, and that wind apparently is kicking up a little bit down there. Kept taking it back over his shoulder, then he thought better of it. But South Carolina again, first down and 10 yards to go from their own 20. If you want to keep up with what's going on, be on CSS each day. Then the place for you is the CSS website at www.cssports.com. You'll find our weekly schedule there, as well as other information about our network. That's CSS. It's your source for sports in the Southeast. South Carolina's Phil Petty. He's done a nice job today through his first touchdown pass of the year, but he can't quite get it set here for this opening play, and he will go to the sidelines after calling a timeout. So Petty didn't look as if he had the... Uh, formation set as he wanted and so we're going to take a timeout as Petty takes a timeout. We're in the early second period. Mississippi State is leading South Carolina. 9-7 is our score in this ball game. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. South Carolina with Phil Putty. They're in their favorite formation. That's ace gun trips flex. That's the formation they're in right now. I love it when you know the play. I'm going to explain that to you. I wish you would. And Putty is going to fake it and keep it again. He rolls out and he has some pressure and throws it up the sideline and the pass is going to be caught out of bounds. Out of bounds. It was caught out of bounds along the 45-yard line by Brian Scott. Now here's Jim with the explanation. About ace, gun, trips, flex. Right. Ace is one back. All right. Gun, it means they're in the shotgun. Okay. And trips three backs go in one direction. Three, trips means they have three receivers to one side. Flex means they split a receiver to the other side. Very ace, good. Ace, gun, trip, very, flex. Very good. You did that well. Didn't work at all, though. Jim. No, it didn't work that time. But <laughs> Better try something else. Second down play. Putty handles. Going to run a little draw play. And nothing doing. Absolutely nothing. Ball may have come free. It looked like the ball came free. Mississippi State they got, the got the football. They got the football. Watson had it. Stevens may have been the guy with the fumble recovery. 
Davis, I think, was the guy who made the hit on the play. And we'll hopefully see it here in a moment, but the Bulldogs get another big break defensively. And there you see the turnovers, Jim. That's dramatic. South Carolina's gotten three turnovers on the day. Mississippi State hasn't turned it over yet. Big difference in the ball game. Petty, inside handoff. Let's see if we can see who caused the fumble and who comes up. I with think it. it was Ellis Wims again who caused the fumble. That indeed was Connor Stevens who came up with it. Big Prather was up there too, yeah. yeah. Miller is the deep back. Whistle blows the play dead. Mississippi State tried to get it off on a handoff to uh, Desenzo Miller, but the play had been blown dead, and the flag is down, and the official will give us the call. Handball, false start on the offense, a five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Twice Mississippi State has gotten the ball deep in South Carolina territory on a turnover, once on the block punt. Now, and on the first play, they have committed a penalty, and I know Coach Jackie Sherrill, he hates pre-snap penalties, and they've had a pre-snap penalty, a delay of the game, and now an illegal procedure on both of those situations. I think he was riding down. That was not good on both those occasions. I think you're exact, exactly right. Very much at first and 15. South Carolina shows they're coming. The give is to Miller, and he is going to be knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by John Stamper, a 6'4", 255-pound junior who shot across a defensive end and made a fine play. Nobody blocked Stamper on the play, I don't think. He came in unmolested and just took on Desenzo Miller one-on-one -on -one and hammered him down for negative yardage. Watch this play by Stamper. This is just good defense, I think, Jim. They were trying to, to blitz up the middle, but Stamper came across from the outside and made the play. So South Carolina, once again, you get another look at Stamper burying Desenzo Miller. So Mississippi State, second down, long yardage. Play action, Madden has time, throws the pass, complete to Parker at the 10, and he goes to the eight-yard line. He had time to throw, and he drilled it to Parker. Nesmith is the guy who makes the tackle inside the 10, but the Bulldogs, after a penalty and a loss of yardage, pick up the first down anyway. And Clarence Parker, Parker made a good adjustment to the football, I think. The ball was thrown behind him just slightly. It was a fairly well-thrown pass by Wayne Mackin, but watch the turn, and you'll see Clarence Parker sort of move back to the outside and make the grab. There he goes, makes the grab, and almost took it the distance. Inside for the first down. Good play, Mississippi State. The give is to Miller, and he took a false step, a false start before the play got underway, and although he picked up about five yards, that one's going to come back once again, and that's another one of those pre-snap penalties. Well, it's a good idea if you can get away with it, but of course, Desenzo Miller didn't, and Mississippi State's going to be hit again, and Coach Jackie Sherrill makes the proper notation there, but you're right, Jim, Mississippi State's got Illegal it. motion on the offense, a five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Bulldogs have got to find some way to just stop doing that, and it's easier said than done, I know, obviously, and especially from up here, but something's got to be done. They do, do that too often. Penalty-wise, that is the uh, third, fourth penalty against Mississippi State. Four, all five-yard penalties. One back this time, Griffith, and they go to Griffith inside, and he goes absolutely nowhere. Absolutely nowhere because Langston Moore, 6'3", 285-pound sophomore, is there to stop the play for a yard loss. And it will be second down and goal from the 14-yard line. Watch Langston Moore. He just fills the hole. He's right there. And again, there was no one blocking on him. And he dumps Justin Griffith in the backfield before he really had a chance to get started. So third down and long yardage for Mississippi State. Bulldogs are going to use two backs, a tight end on the right side, and a pair of receivers. Now they put Miller in motion, roll in that direction, throw the football, incomplete, trying to get the ball to Miller down inside the 10-yard line, and that play uh, never really developed. Well defended by South Carolina, too. They were reading that play all the way, and when Matkin rolled to his left, all of his would-be receivers were well covered by South Carolina defenders. So Mississippi State, not a particularly good play for the Bulldogs on that occasion. Bulldogs, who blocked a punt, came away with three points. Now have recovered a fumble and are trying to come away with more than three points. And certainly that's no guarantee at this point in time, but they're in a third down and 14 and goal to go. Another rollout probably. Straight drop back. Now he throws. He's got the receiver there, and a pass is broken up. Pass is broken up. Trying to get the ball to Justin Jenkins, and Sheldon Brown did a great job. And Excellent job by Brown. 
It looked like Jenkins was open momentarily. This is just a good play. I think Wayne Mack can throw this ball just about as well as you can throw it. Throws it to the outside, but the South Carolina defender just closes on the football in a hurry and knocked it away. Good play on both ends, really. Westerfield. Ball will be placed down on the 21-yard line. And the kick is good. Westerfield nails a 31-yarder, and Mississippi State takes a 12-7 lead in the ballgame. But twice, South Carolina has been able to defend their goal pretty well after a turnover, and the Bulldogs have been able to kick only a pair of field goals. 12-7, Mississippi State. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Mississippi State will kick off to South Carolina, leading the ball game 12 to 7. Bulldogs have taken three turnovers and turned them into 12 points and leading this ball game. This last opportunity started after a, a fumble recovery, and the uh, Bulldogs got it at the 25-yard line, ended up uh, as deep as the eight-yard line, and then uh, ended up kicking the field goals. Actually, six yards, six plays, according to the to the drive, and two minutes and ten seconds of expired time. And Scott Westerfield, who is perfect on field goals now, four for four this year, kicked his second of the ball game. This one of 31 yards. And really, the only touchdown for Mississippi State raced in by the defense, and the other two set up by special teams and defense. So the Mississippi State offense once again struggling just a bit this afternoon. Kickoff coming to Corey Alexander at the goal line. Audie wants to return it, and Edward Yates was the first to get there and then got some help just across the 20-yard line. And that's where South Carolina once again will start from. They've started from very uh, questionable field position. They've started from the 20. Now for the third time, this is the fourth time of the ballgame. This is the fourth time they've started from the 20. Their best field position to start with has been their own 32, and they had one start from their own 11-yard line. So field position definitely has favored Mississippi State so far in this football game. And that's exactly reversed to what Georgia had because Georgia had the poor field position. South Carolina dominated two weeks ago, and they came away with a win. So Mississippi State trying to turn the, turn the other key around as far as South Carolina is concerned. Petty out of the shotgun. Uh, he wants to throw on first down, and he wants to throw deep over the middle. The pass is going to be broken up and incomplete. I'm trying to get it to Atkinson at about the 45-yard line. Mississippi State had good coverage on the play. Fred Smith, I think. Had a couple of guys around the football. Smooth, the primary defender. You know, Atkinson made the statement earlier in the week that he had never heard of Fred Smoot. I see. Well, perhaps he has changed, changed his opinion now. What do you think, Jim? Well, I'm not sure. I, I figure that all these guys watch tape, don't they? Yeah, I think they He do. may not have known the name. He knew the number. Yep, I think you're right. Second down from the 20. Bulldogs show they're going to blitz. On a little draw play and not anything there. A very short gain on the play. And that's the, that's the favorite running play for South Carolina. Just run the little delay, the little draw out of the shotgun formation. And you know, they block it well, and they do a good job of disguising it for, them, for the most part, but I think State's defense has done a good job in defending that play thus far this afternoon. They've done a great job of reading the blocks and pretty well stopping that particular play for South Carolina. South Carolina running with Pinnock as their, their running back right now. The one back set out of the gun. They have two receivers to either side. This is a Conversion play, want to throw the little quick in, and the pass is caught by Kelly. Kelly on the slant, catches the football, and gets taken off his feet, but in first down territory. Kendall Robertson is the guy who makes the tackle, but a, a well-executed play, and Kelly, who has had big games against Mississippi State, he caught nine balls against them in his freshman year, and then last year he had five catches, over 100 yards receiving against the Bulldogs as a freshman, and 78 on five catches last year. He's already caught four balls for 42 yards this year. Very, very good receiver. Good route, good pattern, and great throw by Petty. Want to run again, out of the, and Pennick broke a tackle and gets into the secondary and is tough to bring down. Finally, wrestled down inside the Mississippi State 40-yard line by Robertson. Bulldogs looked like they had him hemmed up. And he just broke the tackle and kept roaming, but looked downfield because there's a yellow marker on the play. Way back downfield. It took Robertson about seven yards to get him tackled. 
but this one's going to come back. South Carolina has been hurt by the penalty flag this afternoon, perhaps more so than Mississippi State, although some five-yard penalties have definitely hurt the Bulldogs, but South Carolina had a touchdown call back on the kickoff return, and now a, a great play negated by the penalty flag. Let's take a look at it once again. Good running by South Carolina. Watch this play, and Jim called it exactly right. Robertson hangs on for about seven yards before he can bring the big fellow down. Great running by South Carolina. First down play again. It'll be first and 15. Petty wants to throw over the middle, and the pass is caught by Brewer. Brewer slid out, caught the ball, was rustled down by the dog safety, Eugene Clinton. Very short gain on the play. And South Carolina, though, likes that little short pass. One thing that Petty has done, maybe his biggest improvement, according to Coach Jackie Sherrill, as they watched him on film from one year to the next, is the fact that he is much quicker at ridding himself of the pass. He's getting rid of the ball quickly. The offense at South Carolina is in, enables him to get the ball to receivers very quickly. That's a good observation. I think it's absolutely right, and he, is, he has been right on with these passes for the most part. Throws to Kelly. Kelly's got it again. And he's got a first down at the Mississippi State 38-yard line, and Kelly is really eating up the Mississippi State secondary at the moment. Robertson is the guy who's able to bring him down. Not only that, but watch the blocking. Nobody gets to or close to Phil Petty, and he just rockets it downfield. A good route by the receiver. Petty's got all day to throw. The Gamecock offensive forward ball is just doing a great job, and he is doing a good job as well, picking out his perhaps secondary receivers on that particular play. He was looking at that time at Jamal Kelly all the way, but he has thrown to his second and third receivers oftentimes this afternoon. Just done a nice job for South Carolina. 23 yards on the reception. Ace gun trips flex again, and uh, here's Petty under pressure, going to throw it up the sideline, and the pass is going to be incomplete. That time, Robertson had good coverage on Atkinson as they tried to throw deep on the near sideline. And Mississippi State sent one of their dog safeties on the left side of the defensive forward wall, and South Carolina did a great job of picking that up and, again, gave Kelly time to look downfield, but the pass goes incomplete. South Carolina is doing what they want to do right now. Petty calling that play, sending his ball club up to the line of scrimmage. Bulldogs have not really been able to be as effective putting pressure on him as they would have liked in this ball game. They're on the Mississippi State, 38, trailing by five points. Quick out, overthrown, tried to get it to Brewer. Good pressure by Clinton as the dog safety was coming that time, and that forced Petty to get rid of it a little quicker than he wanted, and Josh Morgan was over there in the coverage. I think Morgan had good position on the on the pass receiver as well, and Petty might have thrown it out of bounds intentionally, but for a change, Mississippi State, let's see here. Good quick release, but again, Josh Morgan, as Jim called it, was right up there, and good pressure once again, or this time on Phil Petty for a change. So Mississippi State's defense is forcing South Carolina line into third down and long again on the 38 yard line so they're in mississippi state territory game cocks have uh, moved the football and now petty and he pumps and he looks and he throws in the middle the pass is caught once again by kelly just a great job by kelly as he was able to get inside of smooth who tackles him near the 20 maybe the 19 yard line but that is a big, big third down play for South Carolina. Well, Mississippi State's just locking up one-on-one -on -one in the defensive secondary, and so far they haven't found anyone who can cover Kelly. Pump fake, again, plenty of time for the game got quarterback, and finally he hits his wide receiver, and again, Kelly with a good reception, smooth there to knock him down, but not before the first down had been earned. South Carolina started this drive at the 20. Well, they picked up three first downs along the way, 59 yards, eight plays thus far. Penny changing the play. Yeah, he's going to move uh, Penick over on his right side now. And he wants to throw again, and the slam in is complete. And the catch by Scott as he got it outside the five and turned and took it to the three-yard line. That was Brian Scott, Pig Prather, and Fred Smoot on the tackle. And this has been a very impressive South Carolina drive. I couldn't agree with you more. This is a beautiful drive, and Lou Holtz has got to be happy about this performance. Watch this protection again. Pretty good protection, then a good route, good pass by, by Petty, and once again, South Carolina knocking on the Mississippi State door first, and goal to go for the Gamecocks, who look for the go-ahead score. McGuire's come in as the up-blocking back. Pennick is the tailback. You wonder if Watson may be hurt. He hasn't played much here in this first half. And that is Pennick. Uh, he breaks the first tackle and reaches the two-yard line. 
Dorsett Davis, I think, was up underneath the play, hitting him initially. Then Mississippi State gave him a lot of help. Fred Smoot, I think, helped out there. Penix a big load. He, he's a he big a running back. Six impressive. tall and 245 pounds, a sophomore, Andrew Penix. And there you see some statistics in 1999. Eight touchdowns, 87 points in the year 2000. Already 12 touchdowns and a whole lot of points more for, game, for the Gamecocks. Second and goal, ball on the two. I think they're going to have to throw for the touchdown. I don't think they can run it in on stage. We'll see. That's Tunnick again, and he plunged, maybe got a little bit of yards, half yard or so on the play. A lot of white shirts there. Bulldogs trying to stop South Carolina. Now it'll be a third down now for the Gamecocks. Trying to punch it in. Ball still at the two-yard line. Third down and two and goal to goal. And South Carolina going to get Ryan Brewer into the ball game and bring out the big up blocking back McGuire. And look at Mississippi State, Jim. They're putting about 11 men very, very close to the line of scrimmage, if not all of their players. Carolina may throw on this one. Yep, and they're going to play action and roll it out and throw it into the end zone. And the pass is overthrown, trying to get it to the back of the end zone and tending it for the tight end. But Fred Smoot was down there defending, and Pig Prather was in the vicinity of the football. Good coverage that time downfield by Mississippi State. Petty had nowhere to throw it to. They were trying to throw the ball to Hart Turner, a big tight end, a freshman out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. And South Carolina has been stopped at the two-yard line, and the Gamecocks are going to attempt the field goal. Good defensive work on third down by Mississippi State, particularly in the secondary. They put a little pressure on Petty as well. And the Gamecocks force, as Jim said, into the field goal. Now they'll call a timeout down on the field. I don't think they've got enough men on the field. Reed Bethay is the field goal kicker. He was ready to attempt a field goal, but South Carolina calls the timeout. They're missing a man. Ball is just inside the two-yard line. It is fourth down, and South Carolina has their field goal kicker out. They are trailing 12 to 7 in this ball game, but this drive by South Carolina has uh, been very, very impressive, and it got it to the two. There are the timeout situation. Mississippi State has a couple. South Carolina now has called their second and have only one left, and the amount of time remaining in the first half of play is two minutes and 38 seconds. And in the second quarter, Field goal attempt by Bethay. They'll place it down at about the nine, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. And suddenly this ball game is tightened to within two. It is Mississippi State 12 and South Carolina 10. As the Bulldogs make a defensive stand, just as South Carolina has done twice in this ball game, and prevent the end zone from being dented. But I wonder if South Carolina has found something vulnerable in the Mississippi State defensive secondary because that was a very impressive drive. You called it, Jim. It was the best drive of the day, and they moved that football down the field authoritatively. Petty was very sharp on his passes, and he used a ball, about all of his receivers downfield, so they did a good job, South Carolina, in moving the ball downfield, getting it first in goal at the three, but then Mississippi State's defense buckling down, and the Gamecocks eventually settling for the field goal, so they trail 12 to 10 with a whole half of football remaining, plus two minutes and 34 seconds. South Carolina has outgained Mississippi State in total yardage, 206 to 118. So the Gamecocks have dominated from that standpoint. And as you look, about 78 of those yards came on that last drive. In fact, uh, well, 76 yards is the official. 13 plays, five minutes and 23 seconds. And an 18-yard field goal by Reed Bethay Pulls the Gamecocks to within two. Mississippi State has deep Larry Huntington and Dante Walker. Huntington and Walker standing along the goal line, and Jason Course will kick it away for South Carolina. We're late in the first half of the football game. They sold well over 80,000 tickets, but you see some empty seats here at the stadium, so not everybody showed up, but uh, they sold a lot of tickets for this ball game. Well, heavy rains in the Columbia area last night, of course, but today it's been great, even some sunshine from time to time. Here's a kickoff. Kickoff will be returnable, and Huntington dropped it and picked it up along the five. And he looks for a little bit of running room and finds it over the 30, still going at the 38. He has taken off his feet, and Mississippi State will get good field position with 2.23 left to go on the first half clock. Well, Huntington dropped the football initially, but then he kept his composure, picked it up, and Mississippi State had a little bit of a lane there, and he brought it back to the 38-yard line. 
You're going to see him drop it right off the bat, but then he retains possession of the football and good blocking. You won't see a South Carolina defender. There was one that missed there, but downfield returns it out to the 38. So State's in great shape, as Jim said. First down and 10 yards to go at their own 38-yard line and a couple of minutes to go in the first half. Justin Griffith got the call and got a couple of yards over the 40-yard line. South Carolina has been tough to run against. They saw him, the free safety was up to help out on the play. Second down seven for Mississippi State. And Carolina does a lot of things Mississippi State does, Jim. They walk their linebackers up, they walk their defensive backs up, and then they drop them off. So disguising the defense is a big part of their defensive plan as well, I think. High formation for Mississippi State. Can off the play action, has plenty of time, throws the pass, it is low and scooped up by Grindle. I think a catch will be awarded right up along the 50-yard line. Low pass, Grindle able to pick it up off the ground. Mississippi State picks up a first down. Now the Bulldogs would like to come away with points here just before halftime with a minute 42 remaining, and they have two timeouts remaining. South Carolina only a one timeout remaining. Madkin is now 8 of 15 for 94 yards in the ball game. Dogs go to the ground. Atkin going to throw it away that time. Uh, receiver's well covered, and he was getting pressure, and he just threw that football away. You're exactly right. Not only were the receivers well covered, but Matkin was feeling the pressure, too, as well. And South Carolina, again, continues to impress defensively, just putting the pressure on Wayne Matkin. They haven't gotten to him too often this afternoon, but they've forced him into several hurries. Ball right at the 50-yard line. And Matkin will work out of the shotgun once again. That's Griffith in there. As is a lone back. Four wideouts. South Carolina going to rush four. And Matkin with time throws the pass complete. Nice job by Huntington to stay on his feet and uh, run out of bounds now inside the 35, maybe the 34-yard line. Huntington with a nice little move. Faison took him out of bounds. He got away from uh, Kevin House as he faked out House and got an extra four or five yards out of the play. And you see Wayne Matkin, and very good job by Huntington. First of all, to grab the football, coming back to it, then cuts to the sidelines, keeps his feet, and then is pushed out of bounds, stops the clock, of course. And Mississippi State with a great opportunity now with a minute 14 to go and a first down play. On the 34, South Carolina territory. Again, out of the shotgun. Matkin under some pressure. Gets hit. The ball is fumbled. South Carolina recovers the football. South Carolina got the fumble recovery. The Gamecocks with the ball knocked free and recovered it. There you get a look at turnovers. Mississippi State with their first turnover of the ball game. Occurs with a minute eight to go in the first half. As you see Mackin back to throw. Mackin looking downfield and fills the pressure and drops the football in South Carolina. Right there to recover it. That was Cecil Caldwell on the recovery, and that was uh, Faison, Rashad Faison, the free safety who was on the blitz and knocked it free, and South Carolina gets the turnover and take over the football at their own 36-yard line. So now they have a minute and eight seconds to see if they can put points on the board. Set up the screen. The pass is caught by Pennock. They had a tough time getting to it, though, and the Bulldogs are able to get to him and drive him out of bounds with Connor Stevens getting over there along with uh, Eugene Clinton and company. Mississippi State was putting the pressure on Phil Petty, and so he didn't throw a particularly good pass, but had it been a good pass, I think he had a good good little yardage up field, but as it turned out, they still got positive yardage on the play, just a couple of yards. So South Carolina not sitting on the... 12 to 10 Mississippi State lead at the present time. They're trying to get the ball downfield with just a little more than one minute to go in the first half. Well, he got out of bounds. That conserves time. Bulldog show blitz. South Carolina picks it up. Petty has some time. Now he steps up, being chased out of the pocket, trying to get to the sideline, and he does at the 35-yard line. Clinton chased him out of bounds. Petty wisely with uh, no receiver to throw to, and a pocket collapsing made the play and got out of bounds. And Eugene Clinton just came up and didn't, didn't even touch him when he went out of bounds. A good play by him, heads up. Didn't hit the South Carolina quarterback when he went out of bounds. He was out of bounds and stopping the clock with 53 seconds to go. So South Carolina goes back to work, and it appears the game cocks are going to put it in the air again. Wide receivers left and right. One back, 
four receivers, but out of the uh, the quarterback under center. It's not too many times we've seen the quarterback under center. They're going to put Corey Alexander in and sweep him on the play, and Alexander is in trouble, and he's going to be brought down by Fred Smoot, who makes a nice play. They like to do that on occasions, the old Florida sweep where you put right. the wide receiver in motion and then hand him the football. And they did that with Corey Alexander, who was the touchdown maker earlier in the ball game, but Fred Smoot was there to stop the play. And it will be fourth down now. And the clock is stopped with 46 seconds remaining before the halftime. South Carolina trailing it 12 to 10. They'll have to punt the football with Tyler Dean. And they well know that uh, Mississippi State has already blocked one punt here today. And Mississippi State and South Carolina both with one timeout, which may be irrelevant here in the first half of the ball game with just 46 seconds to go. But obviously, Gamecocks forced into punt formation. Coach Jackie Sherrill shouts encouragement into his ball club. And Mississippi State apparently will make one final chance as Lou Holtz talks at his ball club here on the near side. And a capacity homecoming crowd looking on here in Columbia, South Carolina. 12 to 10, Mississippi State leading. Bulldogs scored a defensive touchdown on a fumble return by Mario Hagan. Uh, they have a, a pair of field goals. They missed the extra point. South Carolina got a 58-yard Phil Petty to Corey Alexander touchdown pass and an 18-yard field goal by Reed Bethay. Dean standing back, and Bulldogs not coming that time, and he gets rid of it. Yeah, great kick. Fair catch at the 15 by DeCenzo Miller, and that's where Mississippi State will have the football with 37 seconds remaining before halftime. Not a lot of time to do anything. Not too much time at all in deep in your own territory. I would assume Mississippi State would just run out the clock. We'll wait and see how Coach Jackie Sherrill wants to play it. But the first half about to come to an end. A close contest, not a particularly well played one from several standpoints, but both teams are fighting hard. The defense has been good on both sides of the field, and we thought that would be the case. And then South Carolina showing some offensive spark on one particular drive and coming back to drive it deep in Mississippi State territory and seven for a field goal. So that's where we are now. Griffith, not much. And the Bulldogs are content to run out the clock here before halftime. That could be the last play of the first half unless someone stops the clock, and I don't think they would, Coach Holtz, looking on. Some mistakes on both sides of the field, Jim. Well, so it's about, ball it's, I think it's the kind of football game we expected. Sure. Both ball clubs uh, putting pressure on each other. Uh, defenses have probably been the dominant factor that in turnovers. And as we mentioned, the kicking game has been important. Bulldogs going to let the clock run out. We have played 30 minutes here at uh, williams Bryce Stadium, Columbia, South Carolina. And it's not much difference now in the score, at least in the difference between the ball clubs as it was when it was nothing, nothing at the start. Mississippi State with a two-point lead against the Gamecocks. 12-10 the score at the intermission. Hard-fought first half. Twelve to ten is our score, and we'll be back with highlights and other information at halftime. You're watching. CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. The excitement of CIAA football is fun. Stay tuned for the next telecast of CIAA football. Mississippi State and South Carolina at the halftime. You see the big crowd here at williams Bryce Stadium. And at halftime, Mississippi State leads in this football game by a score of 12 to 10. The Bulldogs have taken advantage of uh, some mistakes by South Carolina. Let's look at the first half. That's the Derek Watson, and that's Ellis Wims who knocks the ball free. And that's Mario Hagan who picks it up and races 27 yards for a touchdown, the first score of the ball game. Now here's Watson, and he finds a seam, and he leaps over Josh Morgan and heads towards the other end. He's going to outrun Mississippi State into the end zone, but Dennis, this one came back. Unfortunately for South Carolina, call back off sides against the Gamecocks. South Carolina does a great job. I'm going to sack of Wayne Madkin, but now offensively Petty. He got time. He found Corey Alexander. And the little scooser is on the way. They say he has 4-3 speed. He looked like it that time. He really did. And Phil Petty, who completed 11 out of 20 in the first half for 175 yards for a touchdown. 
And there you see, once again, special teams playing the role for Mississippi State. There's the field goal by Westerfield. It sails through the upright. And Mississippi State has a lead in the ball game. Now Watson fumbles once again, and Connor Stevens on the recovery. And that sets up another. This one up 31 yards by Westerfield. And Mississippi State has a 12 to seven lead at that point of the ball game. Now here comes Huntington on a return. Dropped it initially, then pick it up and race it out to the 38-yard line, putting Mississippi State in good field position. Then Wayne Mackin fumbles it right back away. And another turnover this time for South Carolina thwarts a Mississippi State drive. At the halftime, as you see, neither team's been able to run the football. South Carolina has a bit the better of it in the passing game, but the Bulldogs have forced three turnovers, and that has been big in the first half. 12 points, all 12 of their points coming off turnovers. And you have to ask yourself, that's great, great enough, but particularly if you're a defensive coach of Mississippi State's got to capitalize and move it into the end zone. Sooner or later, it's going to hurt him. Derek Watson will be the deep man as we get set for the second half kickoff. South Carolina will receive the football. And Mississippi State did a great job of containing Derek Watson, who had been averaging 140 yards rushing. Watson carried six times in the first half for minus one yard, and he also fumbled twice in the ball game. So they will have to get him on track, South Carolina, if they're going to hopefully win the ball game over Mississippi State. But he is deep to receive. John Michael Marlins kicked us to the goal line. Watson will return it. Now he's in the middle of the field looking for some territory to run. Along the 20, he's still on his feet, and he breaks a tackle, and he gets out to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. So a great effort by Watson as he returns the ball from the goal line about 28 yards. A little disconcerting in the first half for Derek Watson because he returned a 91-yard kickoff return that was called back and Mississippi State's defensive held him in check and then he has fumbled twice in the ball game so definitely Derek Watson is wanting to get on track here in the second half of the contest as Petty brings his offensive unit out on the field. They, we said they had to protect Petty. They have very well. Uh, Watson hasn't been productive, but they have forced Mississippi State, excuse me, to be pretty one-dimensional in this ball game. They so really far. have. Mississippi State, they've stopped the Mississippi State run, and Wayne Mackin has thrown well on occasion, but the Bulldogs offensively will have to step it up, just as the defense does, and stopping the first play of the second half offensively for the Gamecocks. South Carolina short yardage with Punnick on the first play of the second half. Toby Galladay. Now let's look at what happened. Mississippi State kicking game. Well, the kicking game, they blocked the kick, but they also mixed for extra point. They do have a couple of field goals. They have made a big play. They return for the touchdown by Hagan, and they do have just one turnover in the first half, so that's sort of way the ball game is untracked to this point in time. Off the fake rolling is Petty, wants to throw into the sideline, and the pass is going to be caught by Kelly once again, very close to the first down. And the fact that Petty has been able to roll away from pressure and not let Mississippi State really come after him has been big in this football game. That's a good point, and Jermaine Kelly has run some tremendous routes. That's his seventh reception on the afternoon, and he has been the go-to guy as far as South Carolina is concerned. And Phil Petty, good protection, rolling out when he has to, and keeping Mississippi State at bay. Petty has done a fantastic job this afternoon thus far. Just shy of the first down. Third down, a very short yardage, and somebody came offside. Galladay from Mississippi State now did the ball move, and that's what Galladay is pointing, but we'll simply wait and see. He went right into the center. Bulldogs look like they're going to back up. Five-yard penalty. Pre-snap penalties, we've talked about it before. That's the fifth Mississippi State penalty of the ball game. They have five penalties now for 25 yards. And by the way, you were talking about Kelly a moment ago. Kelly's now caught seven passes for 92 yards in this ball game. Jermail Kelly is having himself another of those big games against Mississippi State. Hurt the Bulldogs in the past, and he's doing it again this afternoon. You're absolutely right. The Bulldogs just gave South Carolina first down, more or less, by jumping off sides in the third and short yardage. So Carolina, by virtue of the, the penalty, is first and ten in good field position up around the 43-yard line. Wideouts, two wideouts in either direction. Four wideouts, one back in with uh, Petty and Bulldogs with three down linemen and three linebackers stacked in close. And they're going to get fake and roll with Petty. He throws it into the sideline, a pass is broken up. 
Nicely broken up as Mississippi State's Eugene Clinton able to knock down that pass that was intended for Brian Scott. Over there in a hurry, good, good defensive play by Mississippi State. Eugene Clinton in particular, he was one-on-one -on -one locked up with a wide receiver and knocked it away, had him covered all the way. Pretty good pass by Petty, he forced it in there, but Mississippi State deflects it away, so it's second down and 10 yards to go, but again, as Jim had indicated earlier, Petty rolling away from the from the Bulldog defenders and getting time to throw, buying a little extra time back there. Bulldogs show blitz again, and a little quick out is dropped. Tried to quickly knock it out to Watson, who couldn't hold it. Bulldogs picked it up as if it was a fumble, but it was indeed a forward pass, and it'll be a third down play for South Carolina. South Carolina has gone mostly with no huddle here this afternoon, and the one thing that that does it does not give the defense uh, a lot of time to try to get changes in personnel. You have to basically go with the package you have out there. Uh, South Carolina does take some time with team plays, and Petty walks around, and he makes sure everything is set the way he wants. But, but it's still, it makes you stay in the package that you have on the field oftentimes. Big third down for South Carolina, early second half. Petty hit as he throws, and the pass is incomplete. Good pressure. He was trying to get it to Atkinson over the middle. Excellent coverage by Mississippi State's Fred Smoot. Smoot was good, all over him. Good pressure by Connor Stevens. Stevens was coming after the quarterback, and the Bulldogs, and it's the first time in a while they really put the pressure on Petty. I, I thought for a while there they were going to uh, sack Petty for about the first time this afternoon. Really, they haven't put the pressure on him. But he got the pass away, but Smoot was all over the would-be receiver in Mississippi State as forced South Carolina into the first punt formation of the second half. They don't come after Dean. He hangs this one high and short, and they're going to let that one hit, and it bounces around. South Carolina is going to down it at about the 25 or 26-yard line, and Mississippi State will have their first possession of the second half. We're early second half with the score, Mississippi State 12 and South Carolina 10. We'll be back with more. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. And that's one of the fans here. Better than 80,000 tickets sold for this football game. And Mississippi State and South Carolina. It's the second SEC game of the year for the Gamecocks. And it is the first conference encounter for Mississippi State. They played two non-conference games on the road. This is the fourth consecutive home game for South Carolina. But next week, it just uh, it's just the opposite. South Carolina goes on the road for the first time at Alabama, by the way. Right. And Mississippi State comes home and they play the Florida Gators. So right. both teams are coming off this game into very big ball game. They really are. From the 26-yard uh, line, the official steps in and not quite ready to, to put things in motion. Now he will. Mississippi State will start with the Senzo Miller at tailback. Son has. Broken through the clouds here in Columbia. And there's a little delay to Miller, who is going to be caught and dropped by Faison again. And he has done a great job. Faison calls the fumble uh, late in the first half. And there, the free safety just roaming up on the line of scrimmage, making the play. He just read the play beautifully. Nobody blocked him. You're going to see Faison come on. There's the handoff to Desenzo Miller. He comes just about right parallel down the line of scrimmage. And this makes the tackle. Great, great play by the Gamecocks on that one. Faison with a good play. Second down and nine. Down the I formation. Long snap count. Mike and maybe changing play on the line of scrimmage. Now he's going to throw a quick out route and complete the pass and handling the football out of bounds. Huntington up across the 30 at about the 31. I'm saying that he juggled the football. It looked like he caught it, and then as he was tackled, he may have juggled a little bit, and we'll wait and see. Well, one official's going to go in and overrule the other, and let's hopefully watch it in a moment. It looks like an overrule, and they'll bring the ball back to the 26. Let's see if exactly what happened on this play. Yeah, let's do, because South Carolina coaching staff was right there. There's the catch. Looks as if he has it, maybe juggling. Really close to tell, Jim. That's yeah, it's really hard ball. to tell. So uh, one official overruled the other. They put it right back on about the 27-yard uh, line. And it'll be a third down and nine for Mississippi State. South Carolina would like to stop the Bulldogs, get the ball in good field position. They trail by two points. Bulldogs are three of eight on third down conversion. Look for the tight end on this one, Jimmy. Should be open. Oh, Rendell was open, and he dropped it, and he had a step on house. 
Now, if he catches that ball, that might be six. I think it would have been six. Pretty well thrown pass, really, by Wayne Mackin. Maybe just a step too late. The Gamecock defender did close in a hurry, as you called it, but I think that he did have a step on the Gamecock defender. Coach Jackie Sherrill sends his punting unit onto the field. A little disappointed. Watch the play by Matkin. Back to throw. Got a step, maybe just a bit behind him. Well, you had uh, Howells who got a hand in there. I don't think he touched the ball, but sometimes just that hand coming across in front of the receiver is enough to take a little bit of the concentration away. Cole will kick it. This one uh, may be returnable by Brewer from the 35 to the 45-yard line. He gets about 10 back after the punt. And South Carolina, indeed, is going to be in good field position to start this uh, second half of play. South Carolina huddling up over on the sidelines. The, the Gamecocks uh, from last year to this year, very, very different in what they're trying to do. Last year, much more conservative on offense. They, they are very similar to what their cross-state rival Clemson does now offensively by the four wide outs, uh, running a lot of shotgun, a lot of uh, short passing and slant routes and uh, slip screen type plays right for their ball club. On defense, it looks as if they're very similar in many ways to Mississippi State now, much more aggressive uh, a, a defense which is basically uh, putting eight men up and uh, a lot of blitz uh, a very aggressive defense so so they've changed their styles on both sides of the football there's Phil Petty's numbers pretty good 12 out of 24 for 183 yards and a touchdown and most importantly he has had no interceptions I don't think Mississippi State's come close to intercepting Petty he has been extremely sharp you mentioned improvements Jim he's one of the major improvements from a year ago of course he was hurt in the Mississippi State game as well last year and you have to remember that the South Carolina offensive wall was decimated by injuries throughout the year. So really, it was a terrible year for Gamecock fans and the coaching staff. But this year, they do look like an entirely different ball club. Indeed, they are 3 0 coming into the state contest. They had come into this ball game off a, a very impressive uh, win over Eastern Michigan, where they rolled up well over 500 yards of offense, rushed for over 350 yards in that ball game. Mississippi State has shut down their running game pretty well, but Petty has been the story, the fact that uh, he has been able to, number one, avoid the pressure that Mississippi State likes to bring, and number two, has thrown the ball very accurately this afternoon. They've given him good protection, but at the same time, he's been very, very cool back there in the pocket. From the 45, good field position. Now a quick out route, uh, a little pass out to Corey Alexander, and that was Pig Prather. That's a typical Pig Prather play. I mean, Pig just comes up, and one-on-one, uh, -on -one, he's very, very good making the tackle in the open field. And I'm sorry, but that's just an All-American play by Pig Prather. Fought past a would-be blocker. Not only did he get past him, but he made the tackle as well, something he does extremely well. That was a great, great play by Pig Prather. Prather had 15 tackles last week against uh, Brigham Young, and he uh, he was really solid in that ball game. They moved him from free safety. He was a free safety last year. Now uh, he's one of those uh, dog safety, strong safety. Time for Petty. He wants to throw deep. And his pass is overthrown over everybody's head. He was trying to go deep for Atkinson. Smoot had him well covered in the pass. was beyond everybody. Smoot really was the closest man to the football. He was almost in the route just about as far as Phil Petty was concerned. Dorset Davis putting good pressure on the Gamecock quarterback and Mississippi State has forced South Carolina into third and long yardage. Another possession play for them. Let's take a look at it once again. Again, pretty good protection. Petty is looking off to the left and then pumps, then looks back to the right. Mississippi State, there you see Davis coming in to put the pressure, but the ball is clearly overthrown, and again, Fred Smoot was the nearest one to it. Wanting to do, uh, let that develop deep and uh, just overthrew that one. Towards the sideline, has a receiver open and overthrows him. Clinton was on the coverage trying to get it to uh, Jamel Kelly once again. And Kelly has certainly been a thorn in Mississippi State's side here this afternoon. But that time, uh, Petty was unable to get the football to it. One of the few times this afternoon, Jim, that Jamel Kelly hasn't been able to come down with the football, and one of the few times that Phil Petty has missed him when he was pretty much wide open on the play. So once again, Mississippi State is forcing South Carolina in a fourth down punt formation and leading in the ball game by a score of 12 to 10. Beautiful kick. And this is Miller on the 12-yard line. Looks for a little opening. Broke a tackle. Runs laterally. Flags are down. He's down. And we'll uh, take a look at the penalty. And generally when they're thrown in that 
manner, it means that the receiving team is going to end up pushed back towards their goal line. We're going to take a break with the score. Mississippi State 12, South Carolina 10, 11-24 remaining. We are in the third period of this football game. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Is cocaine crackers crack cocaine? At first, I didn't know what he was talking about. I think it's time that uh, we had a little talk. Ah, we'll talk about it later. If you need help talking to your kids about drugs, call for this free book. Mississippi State, after the penalty, will be back on their own six-yard line to start this series. So the poorest field position that Mississippi State has had this afternoon. South Carolina's defense would like to keep them backed up. Matkin wants to throw, and his pass is knocked down, trying to get it to his fullback. And that was Wadley, the linebacker, who reached in there. And that was a dangerous pass to throw. That close to your own goal line, it certainly was. And Wadley broke on the ball beautifully. And Flicked it away from the Bulldog. Watch this play from Mississippi State's would-be pass receiver, and it goes incomplete. Watch Wadley come in, left hand out, and knocks it down incomplete. So second down and 10 yards to go, and Jim is exactly right. Deep in your own territory, try to get it out of there somehow, but that was very risky, and the South Carolina fans come to their feet. Miller, a little bit of room as he spends his way out to about the 13-yard line. Maybe uh, you pick up a six or seven on the play. It'll be a third down and fairly short yardage for Mississippi State. South Carolina able to defend the play. Miller made a nice little spin move right at the line of scrimmage. Got himself a few extra yards. And, and I think one of the things that DeCenzo Miller brings to the table is an ability to, to keep his balance. He runs with a fairly low center of gravity and keeps his balance pretty well, as you see. Always runs hard, Jim. Always runs hard. Get it to him out of the backfield. Got a block and gets a first down, and that is a big play. He got a kick out block, turned inside it, and DeCenzo Miller picks up a Mississippi State first down. I don't think he had it initially, just that second effort that you mentioned in running hard. And he got past a couple of defenders and made the first down. That's a big first down for Mississippi State. Gets the Bulldogs out of the shadow of their own goalpost back at the six-yard line. And what started so in an ominous fashion with the incomplete pass that was almost picked off. Now Mississippi State's picked up a first down out at the 19-yard line. Madkin uh, with a, a little conversation with Justin Griffith here before the play, and they're going to give it inside to Griffith, who finds a little running room and picks up a hard-earned four. And Mississippi State right now is just trying to wedge things up the field a bit, not do anything too fancy and give themselves more room to operate. And with all that stunning that South Carolina is doing and moving their, their linebackers and their defensive backs up in there, you'd think sooner or later Mississippi State would find a seam in there and perhaps exploit that a little bit. And Justin Griffith was only about a couple of steps away from breaking a big one on that one. Well, Tommy Watson, the Bulldogs' right offensive guard, injured on the play. And timeout is called as they'll take a look at uh, Tommy Watson. Watson, who is a, is a Georgia youngster, but played uh, junior college circles in Mississippi. We're going to take a break. We are five minutes deep in the second half. And Mississippi State, who led it 12-10 at halftime, still lead it by that two-point margin. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Western classes will take place in the afternoon. Among the 14 competing teams, my teacher tells us just say no. Policeman said the same thing. They should walk home through here. Because the dealers don't take no for an answer. To Kevin Scott and all the other kids who take the long way home, we hear you. Don't give up. No. 
Mississippi State in a second down play. The ball is on the 24, the pitch back, and Miller over the 25. Good job of closing that play and stopping it after a very short gain. So South Carolina's defensive tackle, Cecil Caldwell, who's a, a leader on this defense at 6'1 and 275, made the play, and Vicenzo Miller is about three yards shy of the first down. I don't think the South Carolina defense is going to go away. The Mississippi State Bulldogs are going to have to throw the football to move it well because you just can't continue to run against South Carolina. Homecoming crowd again getting into it as the sun is breaking through here in Columbia, South Carolina. Mississippi State third down possession play for the Bulldogs. Two wide receivers, top of the screen, play action pass. Time for Madkin on he throws and the pass is caught and the receiver is knocked down immediately. But it should be a first down. That was Grendel once again who uh, caught the football. And give Madkin credit. He, uh, Wayne stayed in the pocket, stayed calm, waited for the receiver to break open and then drilled him, and Sheldon Brown knocked him down, but he should have a first down out along the 30-yard line. Well-thrown pass by Wayne Matkin, and good protection by Mississippi State picking up the outside blitz, and Matkin steps up. He's in after he throws the football, but a good route, as you'll see here, and a good reception, and Mississippi State has earned a first down. Big play for the Bulldogs. Second one in a row. Good reception. Did you see the block by Desenzo Miller, who did a great job of uh, picking up him the outside yeah, guy? Yeah, got the outside guy, gave him time. Another uh, play action. Down the middle, the receiver is open. Grendel has got it this time and has taken off his feet at the 30-yard line. They got Grendel in the middle of the field, and Sheldon Brown was able to bring him down, but the Bulldogs pick up a big play as Madkin laid it in there perfect. That was a perfectly thrown ball, and again, Mississippi State's offensive wall and their offensive backs picking up the defenders, and Wayne Matkin had just a split second more time than he has had on a perfectly thrown pass, as Jim called it, and Mississippi State's on the move easily. The Bulldogs' most significant and most impressive drive of the day thus far. Pass play of 40 yards. Grendel's caught five balls for 68 yards in this ballgame. Pitch play to Miller. Now he has nowhere to go and going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage as South Carolina got a lot of folks into the flow of the football. Good job by the Gamecocks. They just ran a lot of folks to the football, and that makes it very difficult to, to get much out of that type play. And what they do is really read plays well, and they get a lot of hats on the ball carrier for Mississippi State. They read the play well. Coach Jackie Sherrill was a little bit upset across, but I don't know what happened. Somebody missed a block or whatever, but he thought that play should have gone for better yardage, and it didn't. But as Jim indicated, the Gamecocks just doing a good job of reading the plays, and that defensive unit stands tall this afternoon as they have all year long, really. Parker and uh, Butler have come in as wide receivers for Mississippi State. Out of the gun, long time to throw. Flag is down, pass is complete. That was Parker with the reception, uh, and he caught it at about the 23, 24 yard line, immediately hit by Willie Alford. But I see a flag down back at the 34, and that would generally be in the area you talk about holding. And the penalty flag coming back to hurt Mississippi State. Bulldogs have done this before, not so much this afternoon. A couple of Five-yard penalties have stopped drives or stalled drives at least, but this one's a major, major penalty moving the football back. And once an impressive drive is Holding sort of points. dying on the vine. On the offense, 10-yard zone, Phil. Repeat second down. It was a holding penalty, and it is going to be marked off back to the 40-yard line is where they're going to mark it down. So it'll be still second down. Second down, though, and about 20 yards to go. And so that really changes your, your play call situation. You almost have to throw in South Carolina. Knows that as well as we do, Jim. So they're loosening up in the secondary. Wayne Madkin with one back in there with him. And that's Justin Griffith. A little quick pass completed now, and a tackle broken, and a run to the 30 and out of bounds. Very nice move as the catch was made by Justin Jenkins, who is a freshman, uh, a youngster who has uh, really shown that he can catch the football and run with it once he catches it. And finally, Andre Offing is able to, uh, to knock him off his feet. Let's watch the catch and then the nice little move. That's a great move on a pretty good defensive back. Just missed the tackle and moved it downfield for pretty good yardage for Mississippi State. At least gives the Bulldogs a relatively good chance of picking up the first down. Ball on the 26-yard the, uh, line. So that play picked up 14 yards. It is a third down and six. Griffith is going to go out three wides to the right and two to the left. And 
Adkin back, and he gets some protection, and he's going to run the football. Now he looks upfield, looks for a block, and has a first down inside the 20-yard line, maybe at about the 17 or 18-yard line. A good job of recognition by Madkin that he had some running room. He can really do that and do it well. He did it particularly well against BYU, I thought. When he put the ball down and decided to run, he was almost like a running back in the BYU game, and that time he exhibited those abilities too and as Jim called it he, as soon as he saw the opening he knew what he had to get for the first down and got some pretty good blocks downfield really and then made the first down yardage so Mississippi State keeps their drive alive despite the 15 yard personal foul penalty. Ball's actually on the 19 yard line. Miller is the deep back. Matt can under center this time. They're going to give it to Huntington on the end around, looking for running room, and he broke one tackle and into the 15 and down to near the 11-yard line. Bulldogs put the man in motion and handed to him. We saw South Carolina do that earlier in the ball game. Kalimba Edwards was a guy who was able to make the hit. But good execution by Mississippi State. Matkin underneath the fake up to the belly series up front, and then the Huntington handoff, and then he does pretty good well on his own, and Mississippi State keeps the drive alive. Most importantly, eating up that clock. Only 6.35 to go in the third quarter. This has been impressive. They started on the six, and they are now at the 11-yard line, South Carolina territory. And that's Miller, a good hole, and he dashes to the end zone for a touchdown. 11 yards up the middle, Desenzo Miller for the touchdown. That's another thing he does well, Jim. When he gets close to the goal line, I'd say he can smell the goal line. That's an old expression, but he really seems to because he goes for it, and he's hard to bring down inside the five-yard line. He could easily have gone down about the five or six, but kept the feet churning and dashed into the end zone for the score. A big score for Mississippi State, putting the dogs up 18 to 10. Now the extra point upcoming, and Miller, the touchdown maker, is also the holder on it. Kicks from placement, and he will accept the snap. Westerfield will kick, and he's good. 19 to 10, Mississippi State has a nine-point lead with 6.20 remaining in the third period. That's an impressive drive, and here's the touchdown once again as Desenzo Miller spins. rips it and spins and into the end zone. You're watching... CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. 19 to 10, Mississippi State is leading in this football game. They just went 94 yards and a dozen plays, which was a very impressive scoring drive. It took five minutes and four seconds, and it was all capped by a Desenzo Miller 11 yard run for a touchdown. Derek Watson, who had a touchdown nullified on a 91-yard kick return in the first half, is the deep receiver for South Carolina. John Michael Marlin stands, a freshman place kicker out of Tupelo, Mississippi, standing and waiting to kick this football off. And he has the wind at his back here in the third quarter. Watson is going to catch it over his head, drop it, and is going to run it out of the end zone. And he comes out of the 10 and is going to be hit shy of the 20-yard line and will have a short return. And South Carolina will not have particularly good field position, and I'm not sure Watson made a particularly good decision right there. When he fumbled, I thought for sure he's going to stay in the end zone, but then he tried to bring it out. And I think he's trying to make a big play for Carolina. Derek Watson, the big play back for the Gamecocks, obviously, coming into the ball game. And I think he was just trying to make something happen, Jim. You can't fault him for that. Coach Holtz across the way doesn't seem, or rather on the near side, doesn't seem to be particularly upset about it. So South Carolina will go to work. They lost a few yards by not taking it out on the 20, but the Gamecocks in possession, but now trailing by nine points. Now they play with a tight end in there on that play, and they're going to run big Andrew Pennick, and he picks up about three. Pennick is the six-tall, 245-pound sophomore. Now he's had a couple of decent runs in this ball game. That time only short yardage. And Watson's going to get right back onto the uh, football field. And, and Watson has been South Carolina's man in the first three ball games. He had over 400 yards rushing in the first three ball games this year. Hurt himself with a couple of fumbles in that first half. Well, that did hurt him. No doubt hurt at South Carolina as well. Mississippi State turned it into nine points, but he is in there and always a threat for South Carolina, always. Uh, 
He'll throw his flick out to Watson. Watson breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, and comes out over the 25 to the 26 yard line. So a pretty good job by Watson. Finally wrestled off his feet, but not an easy guy to bring down. Connor Stevens is the is the man who finally tackled him. He's a fun guy to watch in the open field. He has some definitely good moves, and South Carolina wants to get it to him. This is not particularly well disguised. Just one-on-one -on -one blocking for South Carolina. And then Derek Watson does most of this on his own. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets it down close to a first down. But he appears to be at just about a yard shy. Third down and one South Carolina. South Carolina has brought a tight end in to help protect, I would guess, and maybe help the running game. Instead of going four wide, going three wide. And they're going to give it to Watson again. And there is absolutely nothing there as that play is stuffed with Ellis Wims and company taking care of it. I don't think he made it, Jim. I think he might have actually lost yardage on the play. Mississippi State had it well defense. They just slanted to that side of the field, and in fact, they didn't make it. So they're going back to the punt formation. Here's Watson trying to get the first down. You see good penetration by Mississippi State, as Jim called it, and the Bulldogs stop the South Carolina Gamecocks once again. Tyler Dean will kick to Senzo Miller, will receive a high snap, but he pulled it down, and a high kick, plenty of hang time. Miller caught it at about the 37, so Mississippi State gets a relatively good field position. They do once again, and coming off a drive in which they took it some 94 yards, I think it was, for the touchdown, so the Bulldog offense gets back in there, and they look to put some more points up on the board. We're 4.06 to go in the third quarter, and the Bulldogs up by nine. After this ball game, stay tuned for the sports page, which will be upcoming at 11 o'clock Eastern time, followed by the Bob Davies Show. That's right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. First down play, and that's Dante Walker with a little running room, and he is picking up a short game before the linebacker, Wadley, is able to knock him off his feet. But the clock continues to run, 3.55 and counting, and Mississippi State Bulldogs beginning to assert themselves here in the third quarter. They crashed the previous drive into the end zone for the touchdown to Senso Miller, and now looking to put the game away, perhaps, with a long, time-consuming drive here, and they've looked relatively pretty good sharp, or rather pretty sharp the last two times they've had the football and trying to do it for the third time. Sharp. I know, I said that badly. <laughs> I really did. I thought that was, I thought that was you, Luke. That was Dante Walker, by the way, and he got, got a couple of yards out of that. The one thing, <laughs> Dennis, that Mississippi State has been able to do in the second half that I don't think they did in the first half is, is they've been able to balance things. As you see, in the first yep. half, Bulldogs had 146 total yards. In the second half, they've already got 110, and South Carolina, as you see, has only 17 second-half yards, and that's, that's a good difference. And you're right, State is mixing it up with the pass and the run, and they've been effective in both those routes and for them in the second half. But they have a third down play, ball at the 44-yard line. Third down and about three yards to go. Nope. They're not going to make a good job of Shannon Wadley, the linebacker, with good penetration, just nowhere to go. And Dante Walker knocked down, and South Carolina makes a nice statement there. They really did make a nice statement. They were waiting for Dante Walker. I'm not sure that's his strength, third down and short yardage, or relatively short yardage off tackle, maybe wide or something, but that play is coming. And good penetration by South Carolina. It really wasn't Dante Walker's fault. He had nowhere to go. Again, the South Carolina defense just coming to the fore and hammering Mississippi State into another punt formation. Prentice Cole will kick this football to uh, Ryan Brewer. Has plenty of time and nice kick. Very nice kick. Brewer back, going to catch it. Going to be knocked down by Sean Birdsong immediately at the 10 yard line. There's a flag down. Bulldogs may have been inside the two yards. Uh, we'll just simply have to wait and see. And I don't think it was the man who made the tackle. I think he gave him room. I think somebody else on the offside was there, perhaps within that three yard limit you mentioned, Jim. I don't think it was the man who made the tackle. We'll watch it. Uh, there. Well, actually, it didn't look as if uh, there was a, a defender there making a block on Julius Griffith. And then Sean Birdstone is the guy who makes the hit. And maybe this, uh, we'll see if this penalty is indeed against, no, it's against uh, South Carolina. It's a holding, holding penalty against South Carolina. And uh, thank goodness for the replay because you, you, were, you called it correctly. There was no one there. So just a good play by Mississippi State and a hold by South Carolina. That was a beautiful punt of uh, 47 yards by Prentice Cole. 
South Carolina's backed up now after the penalty to their own five-yard line. They'll start this possession with 2.02 left to go in the third period. And South Carolina doesn't like, the, well, no team does really, but they really don't like to start the ball this deep in their own territory. The Gamecocks have lived by field position all year long. And for this game, at least, Mississippi State has taken that field position advantage right away from the Gamecocks. And they're going to work out of the I formation. And that is Watson, and that is Connor Stevens, who is able to tackle him after a very short gain on the play. When South Carolina gets in on in their short yardage goal line type uh, offense, uh, obviously they're, not, they're much more predictable than they would be when they have everybody spread out all over the field. I think they feel most comfortable. You're exactly right about that. When they've got everybody spread across the field and bringing that both ends in tight and all of that, I, I think they really feel uncomfortable and don't execute the plays quite as well. Mississippi State's had no problem reading the plays from that formation all afternoon long. There's the ace gun flex trips formation. They go right back to that. Cuddy being chased in the end zone, going to toss it upfield, has a wide open receiver, and picks up good yardage, may have his first down, got it to Corey Alexander. But they rolled Petty in the end zone, and he did a nice job of delivering the football to Corey Alexander. Just bought a little extra time, and you'll see him rolling to the right of your screen, just waits until his receiver finally breaks open. Mississippi State puts a little pressure on him, but not that much. And he throws it upfield for the first down, I believe, first down yardage for the Gamecock. But now we've got a conversation, so let's wait and see. Penalty on the play. I thought the early indication was that it may have been against Mississippi State. Well, await. And the officials are going to talk about it once again. Coach Holtz is screaming for first down. I think that's what he said. If you read his lips, he said first down. Holding on the defense. 10-yard penalty is declined. Wouldn't have made any difference. Either penalty, the penalty would have given them a first down, right. or the uh, the play would have given them a first down, and then the play ends up at the 17-yard line. So it indeed is a first down for South Carolina. Good job of coming out of the hole for the Gamecocks. Big first down for them and puts them in possession of the football with a new set of downs. First down and 10 yards to go. There you see the passing yardage, South Carolina with 200 yards in passing. Mississippi State with 174. Bulldogs beginning to narrow that margin somewhat here in the second half. Bulldogs showed blitz. Petty wants to roll to his right this time. And he's just going to run out of bounds. And uh, he was being chased by Mario Hagan, who bumped him after he was out of bounds. No harm done, no flag down. And uh, that was a time that Bulldogs' secondary coverage was evidently very, very good as Petty simply could not find a receiver. I was trying to find someone who had a step or two on a defender, and I never saw a receiver break open, Jim, so you called it exactly right. I think Mississippi State did a good job downfield. You know, something else State's done a good job on this afternoon when a receiver or quarterback in that case runs out of bounds. They don't don't even bump him out of bounds. They're just letting him go, and I think someone's talked to them and said, hey, don't, don't even risk the penalty this close. They've done a nice job of that this afternoon. Second down play, about 13 for the Gamecocks. Trip receivers to the bottom of the screen. Putty uh, looking to throw quickly in uh, trouble, and finally they get to it. They get to Putty and drop him back there with Connor Stevens, who's playing himself a very fine ball game. And they drop Petty back at about the five-yard line, and that's going to put South Carolina now in a third and very long situation. That was a strange play because Petty, no one broke to the right side of the field, and that's where he was looking all the way, and Mississippi State putting the pressure on him. He couldn't even throw it out of bounds. Nobody was there. They were all to the left side of the formation for some reason, so Mississippi State gets a little break, good pressure. And we've got a timeout on the field. Connor Stevens playing uh, well, has a fumble recovery, has a sack. Let's watch uh, the sack as Stevens came around and tackles Petty back along the five or six yard line. We're going to have the third quarter come to an end. And we played three periods of football. It's homecoming at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. The Gamecocks and the Bulldogs are in a battle. Mississippi State leads by nine. You're watching CSS. Your source for sports in the Southeast. <laughs> Mississippi State is leading South Carolina as we start the fourth quarter of this football game. 19 to 10 is our score. This Friday on CSS, it'll be volleyball action as Mississippi State takes on Tennessee in Knoxville. The match will be aired at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Friday right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. 
South Carolina with a third down play. And they're about 21 yards shy of a first down. So Lou Holtz and his offensive coordinate, coordinator, that's the Skip Holtz, his son, who's the offensive coordinator. They look into their bag of tricks. Try to pick up at least the 21-yard play right here. And they're going to quick kick the ball. You haven't seen that one in haven't years. Haven't seen that in a while. As they quick kick it out of there, and it's going to roll dead at about the 42-yard line. They snap the ball back to Ryan Brewer. That was a Brewer. I think it was Brewer that kicked it. And uh, he kicked it uh, end over end, got a little bit of a roll out of it, and puts it back at the 42-yard line. So that's, that's an interesting play. You, I don't know when the last time I saw a quick kick. It's been a while, Jim. I haven't either, but it used to be a quite an effective weapon, particularly for Bear Bryant at Alabama when he first right. went back to coach the Crimson Tide. But an effective weapon at least getting South Carolina out of the end zone, out of their own end zone, the shadow of their goal post and facing third down and long yardage. They quick kick it away and did it quite effectively, I thought. Mississippi State, after a 53-yard quick kick, starts from their own 42 protection, now breaking down, passes out in the flat, and the pass is completed to Williamson, who they called dead at about the 44-yard line. That was interesting. They blew the whistle at about the 44 as he came out of the tackle. That was a quick whistle. Willie Alford was the guy who was on the play, and the pickup is going to be very short yardage. I don't think he gained but a couple of yards on the play, so Mississippi State with a football after the quick kick with 14.08 to go, and the clock continues to move. Mississippi State leading by nine, looking for a good drive here, Jim, not only to consume the clock, but add some points up on the board and hopefully put the game out of reach as far as the game clock is concerned. We'll see what happens. Five receivers, no backs. Madkin waiting on the snap. Three receivers at the top of the screen. Got a low snap. Gets a little time. Throws it underneath, and the pass is complete. Did a good job of throwing underneath. Uh, the quick pass to sliding across the middle of the field to Senzo Miller, and he picked up a short gain and will be shy of the first down by just a bit. But a pretty good play by Mississippi State. Yeah, it was wide open. No chance of an interception. The linebackers from South Carolina did react in a hurry to stop him just shy of the first down. I thought he picked it up initially, but nope. He's just a bit shy, and so third down Mississippi State in very, very short yardage. Now they'll go to a very different formation. Two tight ends. And they get in a power eye set with Dante Walker. Instead, they give it to Justin Griffith. And Griffith, I think, has the first down handily as he picks up two or three out of the play. And Mississippi State will maintain possession. That's 15 first downs in the ball game for the Bulldogs. Well, that's just snap it and go behind your strongest players. And Justin Griffith, who is a quality back, and also a very reliable back. You see the rushing yardage in the ball game. South First Carolina down, practically non-existent, only 25 yards. Mississippi State beginning to exert its ground game just a little bit here in the second half of the contest, now with 83 yards rushing. Walker will be the deep back out of an eye formation. Madkin with the ball in South Carolina territory, drops back to pass, wants to throw deep, has a receiver out there, and the pass is overthrown. Trying to get it to Huntington down along the 15-yard line. South Carolina had it covered pretty well. And really, Matkin didn't have an awful lot of time to throw the football. He didn't. They were sending the secondary once again on a safety blitz. South Carolina sent some backers in there and trying to deflect the pass or at least knock Wayne Matkin down. They did a great job of hurrying him, as Jim called. So Mississippi State once again is forced into second down and long, second down and 10 yards to go as the Bulldogs and Jackie Sherrill look on across the way. Bulldogs running with uh, two receivers to the top of the screen, tight end to the bottom of the screen, and again, Madkin wants to throw. And he has to scramble, and he does get away from one tackler and will get short yardage before he's driven out of bounds. So Madkin could not find a receiver and scrambles for a short gain, and the Bulldogs will be in a third down situation. Sheldon Brown came up to drive him out of bounds. A big possession play for Mississippi State. Stops the clock with 12.34 to go, but Bulldogs, as you see it here, Matkin looking to his right all the way, nobody open, and flushed out of the pocket and just does all he could. Lowers his head right at the latter part of this run, then is driven out of bounds. Mississippi State third down, big play here. A possession play for the Dogs is Wayne Matkin. As you look at him now, bringing his ball club out of the line of, out to the line of scrimmage. Now a big play for the South Carolina defense. They want to stop it here and get it back for their offense. Out of the shotgun, Matkin. South Carolina shows blitz. And they're coming. 
And the pass is going to be dropped by Parker. Parker had the ball on his fingertips, but he tried to look as if to run before he made the catch. I think he did. Good pass by Wayne Mack, and he had plenty of time, or at least enough time to get rid of the football, but it goes incomplete at any rate. And so Mississippi State, once again, will be forced into punt formation. Just a physical mistake that often happens. You're trying to do all you can. There you see Prentice go. Pretty good day on the afternoon. Five punts. He's averaged 40 yards per punt, and his longest of the day has been 46 yards. And one reason that his average is 40, he's been kicking into a short field uh, much of the afternoon. And one of the things that uh, that will point out is the fact that Mississippi State has had the better field position exactly. today. Exactly. He hangs that one up there. Now that's going to hit, and the Bulldogs are going to attempt to down it, and they will at about the seven-yard line, and that was a nice job of dropping one inside the 10 by Prentice Cole. Well, just as you called it, and that has given Mississippi State time and time again great field position this afternoon and is evidenced by the 19 to 10 win. Mississippi State has had the better of the field position all afternoon long and so lead on the scoreboard, and the South Carolina Gamecocks try to get untracked. Jackie Sherrill hoping his troops can make this nine-point lead stand up. We still have over 12 minutes to go. Mississippi State 19, South Carolina 10. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Mississippi State with the lead. There are a lot of memories for a couple of guys on that Mississippi State coaching staff of South Carolina. One is, uh, of course, uh, Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator, who was the defensive coordinator for South Carolina under Joe Morrison in both 1987 and 88 seasons. And uh, South Carolina went to back-to-back -back bowl games right. then. And then, of course, Sparky Woods, who is the Bulldogs' offensive coordinator, was the head coach here at South Carolina uh, from 1989 through 1993. In fact, he was the last coach to take Carolina to a 3-0 record. He did that with his 1990 ball club. South Carolina with a lot of green in front of them starts from their own seven following the punt. And the pass is going to be caught up along the 16-yard line, and that's going to be probably a yard shy of the first down. Brian Scott making the catch on a knee. Well, Carolina is going to have to go to some type of package, probably pass plays, no doubt. Outside to stop the clock, some and some in the middle of the field, just as that pass was. But Mississippi State has been done a good job in the second half of pressuring Phil Petty just a little bit. But the game got quarterback has stood in there pretty well so far. Bulldogs working three down linemen, three linebackers. The old 33 package are going to take it and then hand it to Pennick, and he may have a first down. It's going to be very close. He had to get to the 17-yard line. Andrew Pennick is, is the big back. Watson, who's uh, more compactly built and uh, more of a breakaway threat. Uh, we haven't seen as much of Watson today. They're going to take a look at it. And I think they'll have to measure this one. It's going to be awfully close, Jim. I can't tell from here, really. As we mentioned, both ball clubs have big games next week. South Carolina goes on the road for the first time this year. They play at Alabama. And Mississippi State is at home for the first time this year. And they have the Florida Gators coming in. It looks like it may be just a tad shy, and it is. It'll be a third down play for the Gamecocks. That is going to be a great, great, great game next week, I think, against Mississippi State. There you see the Gamecocks. They've got their work cut out for them, really, at Alabama, at Kentucky. Then they return to play Arkansas here. Then they play at Vanderbilt and at Tennessee. So Gamecocks, after playing four in a row to start the season, will be on the road quite a bit in the upcoming weeks. Then they finish it up with Florida and their arch rival, although an ACC school, Clemson. Short yardage, third down play, and the quarterback, a petty straight ahead quarterback sneak, should have the first down. South Carolina had to make sure they picked up that first down, and they do. Didn't get much, but he didn't need much on the play, and Coach Lou Holtz likes it. On the near side, he sees the clock going away with 11.14 to go. Petty's looking in for the sign, and Coach Holtz continues to pace the sideline. South Carolina looking to overcome a Mississippi State 19-10 lead. Only their third first down of the second half. Carolina trying to put together a good drive here. Bulldogs had a 94-yard third-period drive, which probably right now is the difference in the ballgame. Again, Petty off the fake, keeps the ball, and picks up good yardage. He has done a great job off the play fake on that little draw play to keep the football. Rob Knight, the linebacker, is able to finally tackle him, but he picked up yardage from the 18 out to the 25. Let's watch. Watch the fake. That's to Watson, by the way. Watson comes into the ball game. You think he's going to get it, but nope. Petty pulls it down and runs. Well-designed play, as Jim called it, and he picks up pretty good yardage on the first down play. Second down and short for the Gamecocks. 
The one thing that does, that holds those linebackers a little bit. Bulldogs trying to come, but the pass is thrown and completed. Robertson is right there to make the tackle along the 30-yard line, but that should be another Carolina first down. Kelly with another catch. Kelly with the catch, and he has had himself a fine afternoon, and you would have to think that South Carolina is going to look for Kelly down the stretch of this ball game because he certainly has been their best receiver this afternoon. And you know, Petty's doing this mostly in the second half, especially, Jim, with almost exclusively without a running attack. He's almost had to do it on the strength of his right arm there. You see Jamel Kelly with an eighth reception on the day. So really an impressive performance today by Phil Petty. And he gets some time, and he wants to throw it in the middle. The pass is going to be caught by Scott. Scott breaks to the 40, and he's uh, still running free at the 20 and finally brought down inside the 15-yard line by Fred Smoot. But they gave Petty all day long to throw the football, and he made Mississippi State pay for it that time. Plus good running by the Gamecocks after the catch, and Fred Smoot did prevent the touchdown. I thought for a moment that he would carry at the distance, and he almost did. Watch Petty stand in here behind a good good protective line and there the pass is delivered perfectly that is great great running by South Carolina and Fred Smooch you're going to see come in actually trip him up just a bit not a clean tackle but just enough to prevent the touchdown so Mississippi State in a little bit of trouble here excellent running by Scott South Carolina on the state 15 yard line with a first down we are under 10 minutes to go in the ball game Petty he looks like he's trying to change the play he's in that Four wide situation with Watson as running back. And he uh, is going to get the play away and have the option play to Watson. And Watson is not going to pick up much as the Bulldogs defended it extremely well. Excellent job of defending it by Mario Hagan and Rob Knight, the linebackers. Evidently, Phil Petty saw something that he switched off to that perhaps the coaches told him before the game a formation or perhaps that what Mississippi State would be in, but the Bulldogs closed too quickly. I don't think an option play like that would ever work against Mississippi State. That's slow developing anyway, Jim. Second down and nine. South Carolina knocking on the door. And we're under nine minutes to go in this ball game. Petty calling the play, getting it set. Bulldogs haven't successfully pressured him much in this ball game. And he has time again, throws him in the middle, and the pass is broken up. Pass is broken up right in the middle. He was trying to throw it over the middle, and I think it was Connor Stevens once again who had his hands all over the football. Well, I think that's a good idea by Petty and by South Carolina. I don't think they can run it in the Bulldogs. I think they're going to have to throw it. And he just missed connection there. Mississippi State had it pretty well defended. But South Carolina's got an idea of what they want to do, and they're trying to stick it in the end zone. And they're coming awfully close to doing it after the big pass play. But now they face third down and 10 yards to go. And Petty, once again, is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. But look for a pass play. Fisher's going to step in and stop things with 8-11 left to go in the ballgame. And the 25-second clock, I think, had run. It's got 25 seconds, so obviously it had either expired and right now the officials want to know whether or not that clock had expired or whether it was not reset. Let's listen to Harold Mitchell. It's for the 821. Okay, the, uh, the game clock continued evidently to run on the incomplete pass, so they are going to add 10 seconds, and the clock is going to go to 821. South Carolina then after after the uh, reset of the clock did huddle it up to bring it back to the line of scrimmage. They haven't huddled an awful lot today. Ace gun trips flex formation again. And the slant in pattern is under throw. Pretty good coverage by Mississippi State. They were trying to get it to Scott, Eugene Clinton. All over the all over the receiver for Mississippi State. So South Carolina obviously will be forced into a field goal but with Lou Holtz. You never know. He's quick kick once already in the ball game. So could be faking the field goal. We'll see. Petty, by the way, is 18 of 34 in this ball game for 270 yards. Uh, and he's thrown the touchdown pass to Corey Alexander. But they will attempt one from the uh, 21. It's a 31 yard effort off the hash mark. Bulldogs go offside. And now the kick is on the way. And the kick. I think they blew it dead. They blew it dead. The ball is on the 14. Mississippi State came off sides, off on the left side, and they blew the play dead. So a five-yard penalty 
against Mississippi State. South Carolina would still be in fourth down and about four yards to go. I think it was Big Prather from the left side. I think he tried to anticipate the snap count and just got way over on the South Carolina side of the football and evidently made contact. And the ball was never snapped, I don't think, was it, Jim? That's yeah, it. yeah, it was snapped. I wasn't. Defense. They're going to mark it down now to the nine-yard line. So it'll still be fourth down after the penalty. Fourth down at the nine-yard line. South Carolina now will have a kick of 26 yards off the hash mark. But they trying to drill the field goal. He has kicked one already today. And his kick is up and his kick is good. And this ball game is suddenly a six-point ball game with 8.08 remaining. 19-13, Mississippi State leading South Carolina and still very much anybody's ball game here at williams Bryce Stadium. It's homecoming in Columbia. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. This Saturday right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Jason Kors is ready to kick off and South Carolina who has just scored after going 93 yards inside uh, Mississippi State's 10-yard line, eventually kicking the field goal. Now Bulldogs try to answer Prather, bringing back the kick. And he gets out close to the 25 before he goes out of bounds, and that's where Mississippi State will start to play here as we're midway the fourth period of this football game. The South Carolina crowd is going to call on the defense. 84 yards on that drive, stopped at the nine for the 26-yard field goal by Bethay. Ten plays, four minutes and seven seconds, and give Petty and company credit. They, they did a good job. They really did a nice job all the way through that drive, all the way to the field goal, and now Mississippi State looks to drive for some first downs and eat up some time on the clock. And in motion is Huntington. Walker on the handoff, and he is being hit by Offing and drags Offing upfield for a yard or two, but Andre Offing, the middle linebacker, the 235-pound senior, uh, reacted very well to that play. He reacted well to the football and to Dante Walker, and despite being dragged forward for a couple of yards, made the tackle for South Carolina. So Mississippi State wants the time-consuming drive, of course, as the clock continues to roll. Bulldogs with a six-point lead, but very precarious, 19-13. Rushing yardage, Mississippi State now dominating 88 to 34 for South Carolina. Second down and seven play. Matt can old draw play to Walker, finds an open field and fights his way over the 35, and he's shy of the first down. Gonna be about a yard shy of the first down. I think it was offing once again. As you see under Coach Jackie Sherrill, when the Bulldogs have outrushed an opponent, they've had great success, won nearly 80% of their ball games, 49, 12, and 1. South Carolina, I thought, did a good job of reacting to the football. I thought for a second it was a first down easily, but once again, those Gamecock defenders won't give up, and they came to the football and dropping just a bit shy. Third down, short yardage, big play. Griffith on the carry, and I don't think he made it. Griffith, they went to Griffith, and he ends up about a yard shy of the first down, got back to the line of scrimmage, but that was about it in South Carolina with 6.28, and the clock moving has evidently made a big stand. That's a magnificent stand by South Carolina, very significant. That will force Mississippi State into punt formation and leading by only six points. South Carolina, of course, looking for the touchdown as Coach Holtz happy about the way things are turning out right now. Now let's see if the Bulldogs, Prentice Cole can kick the ball as successfully as he has most of the afternoon. Now he gets it away. Wobbly kick this time. Brewer's going to catch it and see a little bit of running room and make his way back to just shy of the 40-yard line. He returned at 10 or 11 yards, and South Carolina is going to have a fairly short field to deal with. And they have plenty of time, 5.51 remaining, and they're down by six in this ballgame. And the South Carolina homecoming crowd, of course, their, their ball club is unbeaten on the year, looking for win number four all here in Columbia, and once again, Lou Holtz has put his ball club in position to win. Mississippi State only up by the six-point margin, and they'll huddle it up here on the near side. A great look at the good crowd here on homecoming activities. It's been an off and on pretty good day. Sun has shined. 
not throughout the contest, but after the heavy rainfall last night, pretty welcome sign and pretty good weather here in South Carolina. And once again, the Gamecock fans and students are getting into the ball game. South Carolina has shown a, a passing game today that has uh, certainly they've mixed it up. They've uh, gone with mostly four wides, uh, oftentimes two wides in either direction, sometimes with trips, but they have spread the field out have not been able to run the football like they have been able to do in their first three games. You have to credit Mississippi State's defense with stopping the run pretty effectively most of the day. But Petty has really bothered them with his ability to roll around uh, in the pocket. They've kept him away from the pressure and have really uh, given Mississippi State some, some different looks. You have to give credit. South Carolina had a nice game plan offensively. They really did. And, I, and you have to wonder, really, Jim, if Derek Watson had been effective or just semi-effective today. Mississippi State had just completely shackled him. But if he had had a routine day, opening it up for Petty just a little bit, we mentioned at the top of the broadcast he needed that. It could have been a very, very different ball game up to this point. But so far, Mississippi State has totally shut down the Gamecock running game, and the ball game rests in the hands of Phil Petty and throwing the football, I think. This game will re-air again tomorrow afternoon at 10 a.m. Eastern. Beginning at 1 p.m., we have a Gulf South Conference block starting off with a re-air of last weekend's North Alabama at Delta State game. And then coaches shows for some of the schools. 5.30 Eastern is the Georgia Tech Sports Today. 6.30, it's the How Mummy Show. Arkansas football coaches show at 7. Live football, Temple hosting West Virginia. And then after the game, it's the Arkansas Football Classics, all right here on CSS. At your source for sports in the Southeast. About ready to put this ball in play. Phil Putty with his ball club 60 yards shy of Pater. And 5.51 remaining. Bulldogs show blitz. Petty with some pressure, and he's going to throw it up the sideline, and the pass is going to be overthrown. He was trying to hit the long bomb to Atkinson, and it was coverage by Robertson. Pretty good coverage by the Bulldog defender on that one. He really had nowhere to throw the ball, but he threw it pretty well anyway. Well, Atkinson's 6'4", and they don't want him just to go up and get the football. Right. And when you have a big receiver like that, you always have a chance. You throw it up, you give him a chance, uh, put the ball where he has a chance to go get it, and he... He let him a bit too much, but he did put the ball where Atkinson had a much better chance than did the defender. And again, great protection for Phil Petty by South Carolina. Did a great job. Picked up the blitz, protected that time. Bulldog showing uh, blitz once again. Don't get to him. Toss up the sideline. Pass incomplete. Smoot battling with Carlos Spikes here on the near sideline. And Petty will face a third down and 10 yards to go. And this has been a a situation where the Bulldogs have been in a lot of man coverage. We had on the first play of this series, man-to-man, -man, Robertson had Atkinson. That time, Smoot, man-to-man -man on right. Carlos Spikes. So a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. When you send some folks, you leave those cover corners out there naked, and they have to do the job. Third down play, big play for South Carolina. And now Petty looks it over and uh, doesn't like it and calls the timeout. So South Carolina calls their timeout, and we've got a timeout on the field with 5.38 remaining in the football game, and Mississippi State leading 19-13 over the Gamecocks. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. He would like to see South Carolina make a big play on third and 10. They're on the 40-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs show blitz. Back is Petty. Petty is being pressured. Almost hit. Still trying to scramble it. Going to throw it up the field. The pass is going to be fought for and caught. And the receiver, Atkinson, will be down to the 25-yard line. Bulldogs came all out after Petty didn't get him. And he delivered the football, and Smoot could not make the play against Atkinson. Pig Prather made a great move from the outside and almost got Phil Petty. He just overran, overran him just a little bit. And then Petty did a great job of moving to the outside, and he threw downfield. And actually, Fred Smoot, watch, there's Pig Prather just missing the Gamecock quarterback, and then he throws downfield, and Smoot had good position on the receiver, but he just oh, fought him for the football, really. Came down with it. Big play for South Carolina. Good play by the Gamecocks. Ball on the 25-yard line. So Tutty has his ball club in position to try to put points on the board right here. 
Only five minutes remaining. Petty has time. Now he scrambles. Now he's going to throw it in the sideline and threw it away. He just threw that one away. He did have a receiver downfield. Bulldogs Willie Glade and Ellis Wims were putting good pressure. Now it'll be second down from the 25, and that's just a smart play by Petty. Look at some of Phil Petty's numbers. 19 out of 35 for 305 yards now. Only one touchdown, but no interception. And he and he alone has kept Mississippi State really at bay for the most part throughout the ball game. And he has kept South Carolina in the contest if we have a player down. But Phil Petty's done a remarkable job this afternoon. He's been he's been a good one for South Carolina. It looked like Big Willie Blade was the youngster who was injured for Mississippi State. Oh, uh, that may be Galladay. It is uh, Toby Galladay, not Blade, who is down. And they're taking a look at him. South Carolina will be in a second and ten on the 25. They were in a third and ten from their own 40-yard line when uh, off the nice scramble by Petty, he was able to find Atkinson, and that play covered some 35 yards and has put South Carolina in great field position. I really thought Prather was going to get him in the backfield, and he almost did, but Petty did a great job of eluding that tackle. And then downfield again, I thought Fred Smoot had inside position, fighting for the football, but the South Carolina Gamecock came down with it and putting South Carolina in great, great field position with exactly five minutes to go in the contest and a six-point margin, which Mississippi State currently enjoys 19-13. The Gamecocks with the game on the line are coming on strong. And the thing that you look back to is a missed extra point by Scott Westerfield after the first Bulldog touchdown. That could really loom big. South Carolina will have Watson as the back with Petty. He stayed in the gun most of the afternoon. He's used four wides most of the afternoon. Looks like he's changing the play once again. Trying to get it off. And he is going to throw it in the middle. The pass is incomplete. Tried to hit the slant. Bulldogs had it defended pretty well. Ball was not thrown particularly well for Jamil Kelly. And Kelly has had a big day, but not that time. He really has. That play misfired from the beginning. I think Petty was trying to change plays to the line of scrimmage or whatever, and the play just never did unfold really like it should, and he threw the ball, as Jim indicated, just a little bit too low, and you know Jermaine Kelly's going to come down with the football if it's in close vicinity, and that, that time it went incomplete. Petty has his two receivers in either direction once again. South Carolina offensive line's done a nice job of giving him some protection. This time he is going to throw the football and throw it out of bounds, and he was under heavy pressure. Bulldogs came after him. He did have a receiver out of that direction, but Mississippi State's Fred Smoot had Atkinson covered that time, and Petty is down and shaken up He's as the Bulldogs up. really came after him. There will be a third down play now. Or rather, a fourth down fourth play. Down fourth play. down play. That was a third down play. Petty is injured, and let's uh, they're taking a look at him. We're going to take a look at the play. Bulldogs coming all out on the blitz. Sent Prather from the outside, sent Knight, the linebacker, and really not much of a hit. It looked as if uh, Prather just sort of reached in and knocked him down, but somehow Petty, when he went down, injured on the play. He could have gotten a hit on the knee, Jim, is what it looked like. As you said, the hit didn't look that particularly hard, but might have got him on the knee or whatever, and, and Petty went down immediately. Yeah, he's, he looks as if that right knee may be hurting. Possibly right ankle. It looks like... He hyper-extended the foot is what we get from downstairs. So he hyper-extended the foot as he went down. He comes out of the ball game. And Kimbrey, Eric Kimbrey, who is a 6'1", 200-pound sophomore, looks as if he will replace him. So Kimbrey thrust into a position where South Carolina, with 4.47 remaining in the football game, face a fourth down and 10 at the Bulldog 25. And they are going to try to pick up the first down with Kimbrey at quarterback. This would be quite some story. Fourth down and 10 coming off the bench late in the ball game. Kimbrey is going to look and throw the football down the field. The pass is going to be caught for a touchdown. Wow. They beat Roberson on the sideline. A great job by South Carolina. An unbelievable play. Kelly's been doing it all day long, hasn't he? He really has. And He's that's the man I would have thrown the football to. That ball was hung up over there perfectly. It was a great, great pass. South Carolina can kick an extra point and take a lead. We're tied at 19. What a day for Kelly, and what a story for Kimry, who comes off the bench and throws a fourth and 10 touchdown pass. 
Now the extra point is up and it is good and South Carolina leads in the football game 20 to 19 with 4 41 remaining. I mean that is something Jimmy come off the bench you're not warmed up you just throw the football up there watch this play. This is just perfectly thrown ball is hung up there for Kelly one on one on Robertson to the outside and just makes a great catch. He was right there really good play by South Carolina. Well you got to put the ball in the right place. And Kelly has the play made, and Kimry is a young man who grew up in this area, grew up about 20 miles from Columbia, and uh, he comes into the ball game, makes that touchdown play, and Mississippi State now has their backs to the wall, down by a point. And the South Carolina crowd, who has felt like it's been a magical year to this point, have to feel extremely pleased that uh, what has happened here in the fourth quarter. And you know, when Petty went down, the crowd went absolutely silent, not expecting I don't think anything spectacular to happen when this youngster came off the bench with fourth down and 10 yards to go and Mississippi State's pressure defense which has been pressuring Petty all day long and he has done a good job and all of a sudden you throw the pass it's complete for a touchdown and just like that after the extra point South Carolina's up by a point so my gosh you just never know Jim that's when they play the game 2019 South Carolina with 441 to go Mississippi State with Huntington back along with Walker for the kickoff in course 441 remaining. Bulldogs have all three of their timeouts. Come by the way, South Carolina has a couple. And the kick on the way is driven deep into the end zone, and Huntington will not return this one, and Mississippi State will start from the 20-yard line. And South Carolina already celebrating the players and the fans. It's been a great game here in the second half, at least. The fortunes of the game have changed back and forth mostly for Mississippi State. Look at that scoring drive. Seven plays, 60 yards. It took a minute 10 off the clock and Kelly with that 25 yard touchdown reception. That was something. Wayne Matkin has tossed the ball to eight different receivers here this afternoon. Has completed 15 of 28 passes for 183 yards and he will be in a situation where he has to move Mississippi State at least in the field goal range against a good South Carolina defense. Going to throw it over the middle, and the pass is dropped. The pass is dropped by Justin Griffith, and he had some running room. He did. And Justin Griffith is usually a very, very sure-handed receiver, particularly in clutch situations. But that time, just couldn't find the handle. So Mississippi State will have to regroup on second down and 10, as you caught a brief glimpse of the South Carolina crowd, which all of a sudden now is elated with the fortunes of their football team taking the lead over Mississippi State. Bulldogs again with three wide outs to the top of the screen, two to the bottom of the screen. Matkin is back there by himself. Has some time, throws, and the pass is dropped once again, this time by Clarence Parker, and the Bulldogs can't hang on at the ball. Nothing wrong with either pass, just both dropped. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. It's a pressure situation inside five minutes. Still plenty of time, though, Jim, as you had pointed out. Mississippi State still has three timeouts to go. Bulldogs in good shape in that department. South Carolina has two. The Bulldogs right now third down, 10 yards to go from their own 20. Need to either move it well upfield or punt the football away and hope their defense can take over and give them good field position. Right now they don't enjoy too much field position or they're a little uncomfortable at the present time. Mackin had a low snap, but he captures it. Now he gets in trouble and he is sacked back at the 15-yard line. A three-man rush, but they got to him. And the low snap sort of forced the play from the start. It really did. It, it missed the timing, and Cecil Caldwell, the 6'1", 275-pound senior, gets the sack back at the 15-yard line. And now Matkin is shaken up on the play. You'll get a look at the hit here. Good pressure by South Carolina. Matkin goes down. I think his shoulder or back hit on one of his own men, really. And that's what caused the, the injury. There you see Matkin going to the turf and fourth down play, and Matkin hurting on the far sideline. Runners Cole will kick it from about the, the goal line. He awaits the snap from center, and Ryan Brewer should get the ball in good field position for South Carolina. Cole is waiting a good snap, and he got it. Gets rid of this kick. Brewer is going to catch it. They are caught it at about the 48 or 49. And South Carolina will have the ball in great field position with 3.56 remaining. The Gamecocks have the football. Now they have the one-point lead here in Columbia. That was not... Not what State had in mind. No, they won't get it done for the Bulldogs. That's great field position for South Carolina. 
Well, they can just stay where they are. They're in good shape, Jim. 34-yard punt, so not one of uh, Prentice Cole's better punts in South Carolina. Right now, they just want to run the clock, and they really want to move the chains. If they can run the clock and move the chains, they can win the football game. Right. Kimberly is back in there at quarterback. They're going to work out of a double tight end set and give it to Watson. And Watson is going to be tackled by Josh Morgan after a very, very short game. Good open field tackle by Morgan as the free safety came up quickly, and we have a timeout on the field. So the Bulldogs are going to use the first of those three timeouts. Good play by Josh Morgan in stopping the play and immediately looking toward the Mississippi State bench. And the Bulldogs call timeout. That is their first. They still have two remaining. We still have 3.43 to go in a 2019 ball game. Coach Jackie Sherrill sweating a little across the way as his Bulldogs look to pull something out against South Carolina. This was a ball game that when Mississippi State in the third period drove it 94 yards in 12 plays and scored it on an 11-yard run by by Miller. You thought that uh, with a nine-point lead and as well as their defense had played against South Carolina, this might be a very tough for South Carolina to come back. And I really thought that South Carolina, uh, with a couple of big plays that the Gamecocks were able to make, uh, got a big pass play to Brian Scott that got them in position to kick a field goal, and then got the, uh, the play by Atkinson on the scramble by Petty, and give him credit, he scrambled away from the pressure, put the ball up, and really put it up for grabs, but Atkinson out fought Smoot for the football and put South Carolina in position. Then they go fourth and ten, and have to change quarterback for the injury of Petty, and Kimry threw a perfect ball to uh, Jermail Kelly for the touchdown, and the phase extra point makes it 20 to 19. Look at uh, Jermail Kelly, a new career high. Uh, he has 123 yards receiving today, including that touchdown reception for what right now is uh, the touchdown has put the Gamecocks on top. Kelly, a great day for the Gamecocks, along with Phil Petty. And a handoff to Watson, who is trying to find yardage, but is going to lose a couple this time. Bulldogs, Dorset Davis and company are right there. And again, the Bulldogs will stop the clock in South Carolina. Will face a third down play. We still have 3.33 remaining. Bulldogs have used their second timeout. And South Carolina has a decision. Do you want to put the ball in the air? Or do you want to run the football? I don't know with this kid the first time he put it in the air did pretty well Jim so I wouldn't be hesitant to put it up again if I were Lou Holtz. Well if you want to keep up with what's going on you uh, can check what's going to be on CSS every day when you go to www.cssports.com. That's www.cssports.com. You'll find the weekly schedule there, as well as other network information. CSS, we're your source for sports in the Southeast. Lou Holtz doing a little explaining right now of exactly what he expects out of his offense. This would be a, a great win for his ball club if he can procure that. Of course, the Georgia victory uh, was one that certainly was a, an outstanding victory over a ranked Georgia ball club. He could beat his second ranked team this year if he can hang on to this one point lead over Mississippi State. Well, you said it earlier, it has been a magical day so far, and a magical year really for Lou Holtz in South Carolina. This could be another one. And Kimry that time faked it and kept it, and Big Prather wasn't fooled, and the Bulldogs will spend their last time out as Kimry has stopped at about the 47-yard line. And the Bulldogs have just used their last timeout. But South Carolina will be in a putting situation with the ball on the 47-yard line, and they will have to kick away to Mississippi State. And the Bulldogs will get another opportunity, should get the ball back with a little better than three minutes to go, but may have a lot of green in front of it. Or a Mississippi State decision could be to try and block the kick, go after it, send 10, nine or ten men up there on the line of scrimmage. We'll wait and see how the Bulldogs play it. As Jim indicated to you, they are down to no timeouts and a lot of green probably assuming the kick has gotten away. And Mississippi State has their work cut out for them as the Bulldogs try to pull out a win here in Columbia, South Carolina. It's a real tough decision to make right here. Do you think you can go get the kicker? But if you don't get the, the ball and you do get the kicker, then it's an automatic first down if you're rough. And obviously, uh, South Carolina then would have an opportunity to run the clock out. But then if you do allow the ball to be kicked, uh, you have a chance of having an awful lot of uh, green in front of you as you try to take the ball back up the field. 
Tyler Dean, who has had one kick block, will be back. And South Carolina will get into position. The Bulldogs look as if they may come after the kicker. And they uh, are not going to get to him. And Dean hangs it high. And at the 15, the catch is made by Mississippi State's Desenzo Miller, who fumbled the football. A flag is down. South Carolina has the football. And we'll wait and see what the flag is all about. Miller tried to return the kick. A referee will talk with the member of his crew. Let's get what it's all about. Lock in the back. Got to receive his First down. Bulldogs fumble the ball away at the 18-yard line and... South Carolina's got uh, not only great field position, Bulldogs are out of timeouts, and South Carolina looks like they are certainly in the driver's seat. You got a brief look at the turnovers, which was once in this ball game, three to nothing. Here's the fumble again by Miller. Sinzo trying to make something happen for Mississippi State. You can hardly fault him. Here's the fumble recovery by South Carolina. But at one time in the ball game, South Carolina had turned the football over three times. Mississippi State had not turned it over, and now the Bulldogs have turned it over twice. And it has no doubt hurt their effort this afternoon. So South Carolina in the driver's seat. All they've got to do is run two or three plays, and they're home free with another win. Well, they try to go off the right side and get absolutely nothing out of that one. But the clock is running. Down to about three minutes to go, South Carolina. On the fumble recovery, put themselves in great field position. But earlier, Jim, you alluded to the fact that Mississippi State was up 19 to 10. They had driven the football 94 yards, looked to be in control of the Bulldogs, and yet they let it slip away. A couple of mistakes here and there, turnovers, and some great plays by South Carolina really has put the Gamecocks apparently remaining unbeaten on the year. They'll go to 4 0. Watson runs out of bounds, and that's not what South Carolina wanted the uh, young running back to do. They wanted him to stay on the field to play. Stops the clock with two and a half minutes to go. Now, I'm still right along the original line of scrimmage around the 18, 19 yard line. So South Carolina is going to face a third and long yardage. They're going to put one receiver out there and kill it. Nobody's on him as yet. Well, now they're going to get the cornerback uh, over to defend him. That's good judgment, I dare say. Yep. Here's the give to Watson, and Watson's going to pick up about three yards, and the Bulldogs do a great job of stopping him after a short game. Dorsett Davis and Mario Hagan make the play, and now it'll be fourth down for South Carolina. They got the ball, though. They slanted it right in front of the goalpost. I would imagine they'll let that clock uh, run down as far as it can. They haven't started. They just now started the 25-second clock, and it can run down to about a minute 45 or so, I would think, before they have to stop it. Then they'll stop it, and they will, I'm sure, bring on the field goal, goal kicker, but they, because a four-point lead would look very, very huge right now. Well, Mississippi State would force the Bulldogs into scoring a touchdown as opposed to a field goal to win the ball game. so... We'll see how it turns out, just as you called it. So the field goal unit will go on for South Carolina. Got the ball right between the uh, goal post. And the uh, field goal attempt will be something in the neighborhood of 32, 33 yards, I would guess. And South Carolina has a chance to uh, take their lead out to four points. They lead it by a point. Now, obviously, four points is big because a field goal can't beat you, can't tie you, can't do anything. Have I mean, to go for the TD. Right. Mississippi State would be in a position where they would have to score the touchdown. At halftime, Mississippi State led this ball game 12 to 10. And uh, South Carolina had a trouble with their offense. First two or three series of the second half. Didn't get much done. Bulldogs finally had a good third period drive. Went 94 yards and 12 plays and took a 19 to 10 lead. But since then, it's been uh, South Carolina. They really have dominated, particularly in the last eight or 10 minutes of the ball game and have taken the lead. They have done what they had to do when they had to do it and done the right things. And Mississippi State find themselves trading by a point, 20 to 19. All important field goal. Now it's on the way, and it looks good enough, and it is. But Faye kicks another field goal. South Carolina leads at 23 
to 19. The Gamecocks have taken a 23 to 19 lead. The clock shows a minute 39 left to go in this football game at Williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. Well, Buffet hasn't kicked any long ones, but he's kicked the short ones that he's been offered, and he's done it well. He really has, and that's what you have to do in these close, tight ball games in the SEC is whatever you're called on to do, do it, and that's his job to kick those short field goals, and by golly, South Carolina is up their lead at 23 to 19. We'll take the field, and Mississippi State still alive, though. But they being congratulated. Moments ago, we saw Jamal Kelly, who's had a big day, set his career high in receiving yards with 123, including a 25-yard touchdown catch that put South Carolina on top. Well, Bull Bulldogs, who have had the kicking game uh, sort of fall down around them a little bit here this afternoon, would like to make a big play in the kicking game right now. Well, a 100-yard kickoff return, nothing would be wrong with that. Bulldogs, I'm sure, have that in their mind. Well, there you see the scoring drive, as it was, simply a recovered fumble, putting in position for Bethay's 33-yard field goal. The other big thing, though, is it ran a minute and 37 seconds off the clock, and obviously the clock is a friend of South Carolina, no friend of Mississippi State right now. Of course, will kick it away, and he does. And I don't know whether they'll try to bring it out. Yes, they will. Out of the end zone, Bulldogs are uh, not going to return it far as it is run back shy of the 15-yard line. Huntington couldn't get back any further than the 14-yard line. And uh, there's a minute 34 left to go in this ball game. Mississippi State, I'm not sure whether Madkin will be able to come out. We'll have to wait and see. He was injured on that last play. And you know, Jim, one thing we haven't mentioned that often today, that the the special teams for South Carolina, particularly getting down on kicks, punts, and kickoffs, they've been outstanding today. Mississippi State with no timeouts left. South Carolina with one, which is academic, of course. Matkin is back in the ballgame, I think. Got to throw it far enough to get first downs. And Matkin under pressure. Going to throw it in the middle, throw it incomplete. He had a lot of pressure. Grendel was curling up at the 30-yard uh, line, but he had a lot of pressure, and he could not deliver the ball. South Carolina just relentless. They have been all afternoon long, particularly pressuring Wayne Matkin, but he's hung in there pretty well. Thrown some nice passes, 15 out of 31 on the day for 183 yards. But here in the waning moments of the ball game, the Bulldogs really need some aerial yardage. They've been unable to convert so far anyway. From the 14-yard line. Matkin's pass is complete, but for very short yardage. Very short yardage out to Huntington. So the Bulldogs got very little out of it. Faison makes the tackle. And that's not the kind of play that Mississippi State was looking for. Now they're in a third down short yardage situation, but the clock is down to a minute nine left to go in the ball game. And his pass is incomplete. And now, with 50 seconds, seconds remaining, the Bulldogs are down to one play. They've got to have one play to keep any hope alive. And South Carolina's defense has certainly been solid here in the fourth quarter. More to say the least, they've been solid, really, I think, all, all afternoon long, except for the 94-yard drive Mississippi State put together earlier in the second half. But outside of that drive, the South Carolina defense has been very impressive this afternoon, just as impressive as their statistics coming into the ball game. They have been a well-coached team, particularly on the defensive side of the football all afternoon long. South Carolina shows that they're coming, and they are, and the pass is caught in the middle. With a blocker and a run being made up the field over the 50 and out of bounds, and the Bulldogs pick up a big play on fourth down. What a nice job of getting the ball over the middle. And Mississippi State's Larry Huntington made quite a run, and he was looking for that one block that might spring him all the way. It didn't spring him all the way, but it sprung him all the way to the 45-yard line. I thought he had a chance to go about the 50-yard line. I thought he was going to take it the distance. He was to see the pass, Matkin. Wide open, the Bulldog receiver, and he's got a convoy downfield for a while, and then South Carolina finally comes into the play to push him out of bounds and stop the clock. But a big play for Mississippi State. Keeps the Bulldog hopes alive. 47 seconds. Madkin stops. Now he scrambles. Now he's going to run, and that is going to be very short yardage. And now Bulldogs will have to line it up in a hurry. A clock ticking down. South Carolina. 
little slow getting off the pile, as you would expect. Bulldogs down under a half minute to go. They're on the South Carolina 41, and Madkin just going to down the football, and it'll be a third down play now for Mississippi State. They're down to 24 seconds. That's all that's left in this ball game. Could be an eternity, but for jo Coach Jackie Sherrill across the way, I'm sure it is not. He'd like more time on the clock, obviously. Ball club still has a chance, though. Third down, long yardage. But with some time on the clock, 24 seconds, and they're at the South Carolina 41-yard line. Well, the play clock is uh, running down, although uh, Madkin went to the sideline. Now back to the huddle. They've got 15, now 14 seconds to put a play into motion. I don't suppose five yards means an awful not. lot because I don't think they're going to get a playoff. Only six seconds, now five seconds on the play clock. Now three seconds, now two seconds. Now... Did not get the play away. Did not get the play away, and the Bulldogs will be penalized five yards. The game clock ran three seconds off. And that was an incomplete forward pass, and the game clock ran three seconds off. I don't, I'm not sure whether the official picked it up or not. It was 24 seconds on the clock. Now there are 21 seconds on the clock, so three seconds ran off the game clock. And uh, Ball spotted at the 46. But they're not going to change it. Now, now they're going to change it back to 24 seconds. Harold Mitchell just... That's a nice call, Jim. That's a nice call. Very nice. I Penalties think... in this ballgame. Bulldogs 9 for 52 yards. Well, now he, I think, has got... I'm, I'm not sure whether Harold and I were competing that time, but... Uh, hey, you were right. You, I think you're the only one in the stadium who spotted that. I really do. I, at least you and Harold, perhaps, are the only two in the stadium. I didn't see it myself. Third down play, ball to the 46-yard line. Bulldogs with the ball. Madkin steps up, plenty of time. Now he throws it long down the field. Pass is caught by Clarence Parker, and he is out of bounds at about the 12-yard line, but he was over the line of scrimmage when he threw it. He was over the line of scrimmage when he threw it. It was pretty obvious he was standing on the 45 when he threw the ball, and the line of scrimmage was the 46-yard line, and so... Madkin, who had an open receiver and had plenty of time, went a step too far before he made the release. Sometimes it's all it takes, Jim. We get the call here. Tough break for the dogs, though. The legal court pass against the off. Spot, 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 yard belt. Loss of down. Fourth down. Well, not only do you lose five yards, but you also lose the down. Let's watch it. Madkin back to pass. Now he's going to scramble. Let's watch where he releases the football. Standing right on the 45. His foot was on the 45 when he threw it. Boy, he had Parker wide open he out there. He surely did. He surely did. Now you get that, that pass is complete. You got about three shots at the end zone if you'll throw it in the end zone each time. Now you're down to one shot. Matkin going to step up and look, and he's going to fire it towards the end zone. And the pass is going to be battled for, and South Carolina, I think, intercepted it. And they did in the end zone. And I think it was uh, Nesmith who came up with the interception, but South Carolina has salted this one away and give the Gamecocks credit. They really did come up big when they had to. Made some great plays. Petty was great. I thought their defense was just outstanding all afternoon long. So South Carolina, more importantly, pleasing this homecoming crowd this afternoon. But they are now 4-0 and and start the SEC at 2-0. and I think it was actually House, the cornerback Kevin House instead of Nesmith who intercepted the pass. But nonetheless, South Carolina has sealed the victory and give the Gamecocks credit. They came back when the ball game was seemingly in Mississippi State's hands and the third period they came back with a strong fourth quarter to win this football game now this is going to be a great win for South Carolina and a very disappointing loss for Mississippi State and that's it that is it it's over in Columbia Williams Bryce Stadium the scene of another Gamecock victory Lou Holtz has the magic in the year 2000 he really does so far at least he is 4-0 and you see it on the scoreboard at least we're looking at it as Coach Sherrill and Coach Holtz exchange after game pleasantries and congratulations for Coach Holtz. His first victory versus Mississippi State. 
And he is a happy camper. You can bet your bottom dollar on that, Jim. And they deserve to win in a lot of ways today. They never quit. Their defense was always there. Jermaine Kelly was excellent, I thought. Phil Petty was good, and their defense was good throughout. And they came up with a big play when they had to have it. And they come away with a 23-19 win. And big plays. We talk about offensive big plays for South Carolina. They had some great ones. They, the, uh, the pass that was caught by Corey Alexander for a first-half touchdown. And then two big second-half catches, one by Brian Scott, another by Adkinson, and then the last one by Kelly on the on the go-ahead touchdown. Those were all big, and the Bulldogs uh, didn't get some things done in the kicking game in the second half, and I'm sure they would have liked to. But I think you're right about that as well. South Carolina will lead the field undefeated. They have taken their record to 4-0. Mississippi State's record falls to 2-1. The Bulldogs play Florida next week. And the Gamecocks will be on the road for the first time this year. And they will be playing the Alabama Crimson Tide on the road. And that's never an easy place to go play. So Lou Holtz and his Gamecocks have, have a much uh, tough non-home situation. I mean, you've been at home four straight weeks. I don't know how, yeah. how long uh, that's the awful long home It, is, it is tough here. to go on the road, I would think. Mississippi State on the road for their first three. You knew the Bulldogs were going to have a pretty tough road to hold with three games on the road. But South Carolina all four at home and they are 4-0. Once again, final score from Columbia is South Carolina 23, Mississippi State 19. Coming up next, stay tuned for the sports page.